Okay, members, if people are content enough, we will make a start on today's meeting. So to begin with, I will pass to the chief executive to take us through the notice of summons and the attendance for the meeting. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor, and good afternoon, members. To all members of Derry City and Strabane District Council, you're hereby summoned to attend the monthly meeting of the council to be held remotely Thursday, 27th of October at 4 o'clock. Alderman Breslin. Here, John. Alderman Devaney. Here, John. Alderman Guy. Here, John. Alderman Hussey. Online. Alderman Carrigan. Here, John. Alderman McCready. Alderman Ramsey. Alderman Thompson. An apology, John. Alderman Wark. Here, John. Councillor Jason Barr. John. Councillor Raymond Barr. Councillor John Boyle. Councillor Michaela Boyle. And Shaw, sure, John. Councillor Carr. Here, John. Councillor Cusick. Here, John. Councillor Dobbins. Here, John. Councillor Donnelly. And Shaw. Sure. Councillor Doyle. Here, John. Councillor Duffy. And Shaw. Sure. Councillor Edwards. Councillor Farrell. Here. Councillor Ferguson. Here, John. Councillor Fleming. <coughs> Excuse me, and Shaw, John. Councillor Gallagher. And Shaw, John. Councillor Harkin. Here. Councillor Heaney. Shaw. Councillor Jackson. And Shaw. Councillor Kelly. Councillor Logue. Councillor McGinley. And Shaw, John. Councillor McGowan. Apologies, John. Councillor McGuire. Councillor McHugh. Shaw, John. Councillor McKinney. Councillor Mooney. Here, John. Councillor O'Neill. Here. Councillor Riley. John. Councillor Stina Barr. Here, John. Councillor Tierney. Here, John. Your members. Just checking. Uh, Councillor Boyle has come in on the chat box. That's me on, John. Thank you. John, Councillor Logue here. Uh, I, I was just cooking up here. Thank you, Councillor Logue. Thank you, Councillor okay. Boyle. Uh, I'll just check back again on those that I didn't maybe pick up the first time round. Alderman McCready, Alderman Ramsey, Councillor Raymond Barr. John, I'm here, John, but can I just have this recorded, John? I'll be leaving the meeting right away and protest at the continued neglect in Straban. Neglect would just council was take some responsibility for. Can I have that recorded, please? Okay, thank you, Councillor Barr. Councillor Edwards. Councillor Kelly, Councillor McGuire. John, John, sorry. Thank you. And Councillor McKinney. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, members. Thank you, Chief Executive. And just to read the statement of remote meeting, I would like to remind everyone who is in remote attendance that this meeting will be broadcast live via the Council's YouTube channel and will be available for viewing by the public and media. The broadcast will also be available for repeat of viewing at a later date. The broadcast may be terminated or suspended in accordance with council protocol. Members and approved speakers are reminded to only have their mics and cameras on while speaking at the meeting and to use the chat facility to highlight a request to speak. By participating in this meeting, you are consenting to being filmed and to the use and storage of those images for broadcasting or training purposes and for the purposes of keeping historical records and making these records available to the public. A council of the council, a copy of the council's privacy notice can be found on the council website. So thank you. Um, and any declarations of interest, if they could be recorded in the chat box as well, we will pick them up throughout the meeting. Um, so moving on then to chairperson's business. I don't have a, a lot of chairperson's business today, but I would say that I have been contacted by quite a few members who have requested to raise issues. 
I would just like to remind people um, that I will be in terms of chairperson's business only accepting items that have been um, properly notified. Um, and I will be uh, adhering to the current rules of debate around length of time to speak and number of times people get to speak on on an issue as well for the expediency of the meeting. So thank you for your cooperation in relation to that. So in terms of chairperson's lessons that I have to start off with, I would just like to um, offer the condolences of myself and the, the council to our colleague, Councillor John McGowan, on the passing of his mother. Um, I, I, John has sent his apologies today. It was very recent, so I would just like to put on record our condolences as, as a council and perhaps a write a letter of condolence to John and his wider family. Um, and just in light of that as well, just to let people know that the notice of motion that John had um, submitted will be postponed. Um, so just for people's information in relation to that. Um, moving on to my second item, which is just in terms of the mayor's charity. Um, I have a charity night, which is planned for the 3rd of December. I know everyone has notification of it, but I just want to day, um, put it in people's diaries as well, if, if they're available to come. Um, it's for First Housing, which is a excellent charity that um, does a lot of good work in terms of homelessness throughout the city and district. Um, moving on, my third item is just in relation to the cost of living. And just to update people, um, I did say that I was going to have a mayor's initiative around the cost of living and around what we could possibly be doing as a council or how we could support our community and voluntary partners um, as they move and navigate their way through it. So last week I convened um, a first meeting with um, the community and voluntary sector and some members of our advice sector just to get an understanding of the level of need um, and the work that they are involved in currently. And just to update people that that meeting was really informative in terms of the wealth um, of work that is currently being undertaken by the community and voluntary sector. Um, there is so much happening um, and they're already feeling um, the, the pinch in relation to that. Um, they have everything in place from warm hubs to luncheon clubs um, and are just doing absolutely everything they can to ensure that people are receiving whatever help that they can possibly give. Now, coming out of that meeting, it was agreed that we would have a wider um, community and voluntary sector meeting um, just to talk about pathways and how we can help people navigate some of these services so that people are aware that there is help out there as well. So I will keep people posted in relation to that. Um, so moving on then to people who have contacted me in relation to raising issues, and I will start in the order in which they have come. So the first is Councillor McGinley. Graham Agat, Mayor, uh, for allowing me to come and raise the following issue. Um, on a near daily basis, I, and I'm sure all our members, particularly those who represent the Murr Ward, are being asked by constituents for updates in relation to the situation with William Street Baths. Um, at this month's Health and Communities meeting, we noted a report outlining the increase in demand for the Learn to Swim programme, which includes over 400 young people here in our district that are on a waiting list for swimming lessons. The Saturday Area Swimming Club are struggling to meet their training timetable under the current arrangements and public swimming is limited as we're trying to accommodate all user groups as best we can with existing facilities. A decision has been recommended and confidential at the Health and Communities Committee in relation to deferral of works at City Baths and whilst I understand that elements of that report are confidential and should be kept as such, it's my belief and the belief of my party that any decision that results in the deferring or the delaying of the works at City Baths, um, that given the significant public interest under the reopening of the baths, that the discussion should be brought out of confidential and discussed in open business. Thanks. Thank you. Um, Councillor McGinley, do you have a seconder for that proposal? I'll second that, Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Jackson. Um, I see that there are a number of people who have come into the chat box. Do you want to speak now or would it be more appropriate to delay this until we bring it out of chairperson or bring it out of the minutes? 
I'd be happy either way, Mayor, but it's your decision. Well, I suppose we need to hear all our people's opinions. Um, Councillor Harkin. Thanks, Mayor. And uh, thanks, Councillor McGinley, for raising this. Um, uh, we were planning to raise it ourselves in the uh, section where it's listed, and I was happy to second it as well. And like yourself and like uh, all our councillors, we, we've been uh, talking to lots of people across the district um, and people from around the area, which would, as it, uh, you know, there's a lot of people in the Boyle side area that uses uh, the city baths as there would be in the Murr. And from the beginning of this, people before profit, as everybody knows, have supported uh, the reopening of the baths. Uh, and we've had to deal with a number of arguments about, uh, you know, doing the essential works will make will mean it will only last a couple of years, all of which turned out to be untrue. And we questioned from the beginning whether or not uh, without the baths would be we'd be able to meet um, uh, capacity for the uh, for the entire district in terms of swimming. And that's been proved now not to be true. We were told at the start it was true, and it's clear now that it isn't true. Uh, Councillor, Har Councillor Harkin, not to um, interrupt yeah. you, but I am. Um, could we keep the debate around the actual city baths until we bring it out of confidential, if we do? Um, so could it be purely now on whether the item comes out of confidential? Well, we're happy to support the item coming out of confidential, Mayor. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Harkin. Councillor Tierney. Thank you, Mayor, um, for, for bringing me in. Um, just to note, the SDLP are happy um, to support Councillor McGinley's proposal to bring this item out of confidential business, um, simply for the fact that the majority of what we are going to discuss is already in the public domain because it hasn't been held in confidential business anyway. Um, it is on social media. Um, it is on elected representatives' social media and has been for quite some time. So I think it's only right um, that we now discuss this um, in public business, and we're happy to do so. And although Councillor Harkin and Councillor Jackson got on before me, I was happy to second the proposal to bring it out of confidential business for those for those reasons, Mayor. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Tierney. Councillor Ferguson. Thank you, Mayor. Um, Mayor, I'm happy to um, support the proposal to bring it out of confidentiality. I just wanted to clarify with City Solicitor the implications of it, because I know the reason that it is in confidentiality is because of the procurement and, and financial aspects to the, the works itself. So just literally to find out the implications. But apart from that, I think the debate does have to be around the, the city baths, which I strongly oppose the deferral needs to be had in the public domain. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Ferguson. Um, Councillor Donnelly. On the chair, on chair first, can I, can I uh, express uh, solidarity with uh, Councillor McGowan and, and his family on on the loss of of his mother. Uh, just just to say that I'm 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 happy to support uh, the recommendation or the proposal that that this is brought out of confidentiality. Uh, you know I, I I've I've been approached by a number of uh, swimming enthusiasts and uh, people who 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 would benefit from the city of Bass. And they say that they're angry and frustrated would be an under uh, statement. So you know, I I would like this, and and I also like that not just for ourselves, but for the the community out there to hear why the the SDLP took the bizarre position that it has adopted. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Donnelly and Councillor Doyle. Thanks, Mayor. And can I just uh, as well uh, what Gary said, echo and send solidarity on our. Uh, best wishes to uh, John and his family uh, on the terrible loss uh, of his mother. Um, Ain't is more than happy to hear this debate uh, in public uh, because I do think uh, that we're about to see a U-turn of a U-turn. Thanks, Mayor. Thank you, Alderman Devaney. Thank you, Mayor, for uh, allowing me in. Uh, uh, and look, um, one of the previous councillors had asked the question um, and around um, our city solicitor, the legality uh, uh, and around the procurement uh, and the financial issues. I just wanted to hear that answer, uh, Mayor, before I make up my mind on the decision. Thank you, Morris. I'll bring in the city solicitor now. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, Mayor, uh, 
the position effectively would be that there is a live procurement process ongoing in relation to this and there are financial elements contained within the report um, which um, clearly should remain confidential there are also issues in and around the overall rates process which would need to remain confidential as well um, aside from that the broader discussion uh, in and around the the city baths and um, uh, could certainly come out of confidential business, uh, but members would be asked certainly to exercise discretion uh, in terms of the way in which they dealt any um, particular figures in and around the financial aspects of um, of this matter uh, to ensure that there were no uh, uh, negative implications for the procurement process. Um, but as officers, certainly in terms of the reports um, and the minutes we can redact accordingly um, and, and deal with it on that basis. Uh, again, as I say, it's just for members then when they are discussing the matter in open business to exercise that degree of caution. And if they wish in the course of the discussion to exercise, if they are minded to bring it out of confidential business, if during the course of the discussion, the conclusion is reached that it can't be done without mentioning specific figures, then I would ask at that stage that members consider whether or not it shouldn't be brought back into confidential business to allow that discussion to take place. Thank you, um, Philip, for that. Um, so on that basis, I'm going to give it a second to see if there's any opposition, and if not, we will proceed with a coming out of confidential. Mayor, just just to let you know, um, our party would be happy happier that it stayed within confidential. Um, the three of us on here, if that if that won't make any difference to the the overall picture, but just have it recorded that we would prefer it, um, because there are financial discussions on around there, and during the discussions, it's very difficult sometimes to 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 forget about the uh, costs and financial figures and stuff like that. There, thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Alderman Devaney. I think we probably just need to take a day of vote then, just to be sure. Thank you, Mayor. Alderman Breslin. Against. Alderman Devaney. Against. Alderman Guy. Alderman Hussey. Yeah. Alderman Carrigan. Against. Alderman Wark. Abstain. Is that against Alderman Wark? Abstain. Thank you. Councillor Jason Barr. Or. Councillor Boyle, John Boyle. Yeah, for. Councillor Michaela Boyle. Or. Councillor Carr. Or. Councillor Cusick. Or. Councillor Dobbins. For John. Councillor Donnelly. Or. Councillor Doyle. For. Councillor Duffy. For. Councillor Farrell. For. Councillor Ferguson. For John. Councillor Fleming. For John. Councillor Gallagher. For. Councillor Harkin. For. Councillor Heaney. For. Councillor Jackson. For. Councillor Kelly. For. Councillor Logue. For. Councillor McGinley. For John. Councillor McHugh. For. Councillor Mooney. For. Councillor O'Neill. For John. Thank you, Councillor O'Neill. For. Councillor Riley. For. For. Councillor Sino Barr. For. Councillor Tierney. For. Thank you. And I see in the chat box, Councillor Edwards is present and is voted for. Thank you, Councillor Edwards. Um, uh, John, I'm on the line as well here. Councillor McKinney, thank you. Yeah, I'm for. Thank you. Any other members at this stage? Mary, I've recorded 27 for, four against, and one abstention. So the proposal passes. Thank you, Chief Executive. Uh, moving on to the next item of Chairperson's Business, and it's Councillor Patricia Logue. And I will then bring in Councillor Emmett Doyle as he contacted me regarding the same issue. So, Councillor Logue. Thank you, Mayor, uh, and thank you again for letting me in. Um, look, I, along with, uh, I presume, other councillors have been contacted by uh, Trojans uh, Football 
team regarding uh, the 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 lockup unit that has been on the the bishop's field since um, I think early 1990s. Um, now I have spoken to uh, council officers about that, and they are uh, they have uh, there is legal advice now regarding uh, the use of um council council land uh for sporting uh lock up facilities etc cetera, etc cetera. but look th this i think is a unique uh situation where uh trojans have as i said at the start have had a facility on the on the bishop's field since uh the uh, early 1990s it did go into a bad state of disrepair um, and the council originally um, uh, supplied this lockup. The council team then agreed that yes, it was in such a bad state of disrepair that it should be removed. And Trojans were advised that it would re be replaced within a matter of days. Um, uh, they then were consequently advised uh, about two or three weeks after it that that would now not be the case because of um, the new the audit that came out of uh, Causeway Coast and Glens. Now I've had a quick look at the audit at a 64 page document, but I do think that um, from what I was saying that, you know, there, there could be some movement uh, that the council could do given that this uh, this had had been a, a situation. It's not a new one, and council have arrangements uh, the same with, with our sporting clubs. So I would like the council officers to look at this again uh, to see if this can be done. It's much needed within the community. The the, the club there have many hundreds of uh, young people uh, who depend. Uh, on the sport, and I would feel very strongly that this needs to be uh, looked at again, given that it, it, it had been on site originally, and that they were um, they were uh, promised that it would be replaced within a matter of days. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Loke. Um, Councillor Doyle. Mayor, thank you. Uh, thanks for uh, allowing me to bring this uh, to members' attention uh, after Patricia. Um, I, I have to say that I, I think that this has been dealt with by council very badly. Um, look, Trojans, whilst that might not be in my DEA, is well known throughout this city of supporting, I think, up to 500 young people uh, engaging in sport. And as Patricia laid out, um, the container that they had previously used, which we had supplied, fell into disrepair to the point where it was uh, there were leaks um, that were damaging uh, some of the kit. Um, now, you haven't engaged with the club over the last two weeks, and, and Patricia's right in terms of what they were first told and then subsequently told. Um, the, the updated position is that, um, which boggles my mind, to be quite honest, is that uh, the club can use some of the council facilities to store some of their equipment um, in Craigan as long as they pay for it. Now, that to me, regardless of an audit, is crazy. Uh, there's absolutely no justification for it. And, you know, in terms of what we, you know, when, when I was actually first told in terms of the audit is that a decision was issued um, or agreed within the senior leadership team, which frankly should have been brought before members. Um, and because it, it seems to, to me to have wide range of applications. Um, I support what Patricia is saying, um, but what I'd actually like to do is to go for uh, go that bit further. I think because of the circumstances the children find themselves in, that we should be providing um, the storage facilities at no cost to them, because recently they were told if they wanted to get a new container, they'd have to basically pay 30 pounds a week uh, in order to, to do that. I think that that's the wrong approach. And I do have a short, uh, proposal, which I will now put in the chat box, Mayor. Uh, and again, appreciate your uh, letting me in on this. Thank you.
Sind Fortschrittsmechanismen oder Reduction? Yeah, thank you, Mayor. Happy to come in at this stage um, in relation to that, members. There's um, this is um, a position that arises um, simply. Um, it's not exclusively um, out of the audit, special audit that was carried forward in Causeway Coast and Glens uh, Borough Council, um, but um, certainly that has brought it uh, to the forefront of everybody's mind. Um, it also deals with guidance which has been issued uh, by uh, the DFC in relation to assets. Um, the position, members, is simply this. It has been clarified uh, by the department uh, uh, and through the audit as well. Uh, that uh, councils, uh, in terms of dealing with any interest in land, um, any disposal of land whatsoever, must and can only do so um, on foot of um, uh, an authority from the council and at market value. Um, and if they do not do so at market value, uh, then they must seek the uh, consent of um, DFC. Uh, to do so at an undervalue. Um, what the audit has made it clear is that the elected members uh, cannot make that decision until such time as they have been provided with all of the necessary information by officers, which allows them to make an informed decision in relation to the matter, uh, which includes an adequate valuation in respect of the matter um, as to the, the market value. Um, that simply, members, is now the confirmed uh, legal position uh, uh, in relation to the matter so far as the department is concerned and so far as the best information that is available to officers is at the present time. Uh, the consequences of that, members, are primarily in relation to the length of time which it takes for something of this to be done. Uh, because it does require, even in situations where it might seem likely that the valuation is going to be nominal, uh, and likely in situations where there is going to be um, absolutely no issue uh, in relation to the matter being done at a nil consideration, um, that we still have all of these hurdles and hoops uh, that we have to jump through and jump over uh, in order to be able to go forward in relation to it. And as I say, members, it delays matters. Uh, it delays matters in terms of even what might seem very straightforward matters, and it puts us in extreme difficulty in relation to matters where there is urgency attached to them. Um, and members will recall most recently, probably this issue arose for elected members in and around the Ballycolman estate and the uh, flooding works which had to be undertaken then. Um, so members, certainly it's already the intention of officers to bring a report uh, to members uh, in relation to the implications of the audit. Um, that's underway and it has been discussed uh, certainly at SLT about the requirement to bring that to the attention of members and the consequences that might flow from that and that will be done as soon as possible. In terms of the second part of the motion, in terms of providing the Trojans with storage facilities free of charge, members that simply can't come forward at the first time because that proposal on the basis of the information that we currently have would not be lawful. Um, and I can assure you members that officers find this every bit as frustrating as elected members do. Thank you to the city solicitor. That advice, I would say, was pretty clear. But um, I'm going to bring in the other indicated speakers who may wish to speak on the issue. But I think the city solicitor's opinion was pretty clear in relation to the proposal that is in front of us. So, um, Councillor Boyle. Thank you, Mayor. Um, uh, I, um, I'm not going to delay the meeting too long. Just to confirm again that I, uh, too, I've had long and extensive conversations with uh, representatives of uh, Trojans Football Club. Councillor Logue has outlined very well uh, what the situation is, as as has uh, Councillor Doyle. Uh, I note the uh, city solicitor's um, advice. I certainly wouldn't be in favour of ignoring that advice. I'm sure uh, people can understand why that would be. But obviously then, of course, uh, I would wish to encourage officers to uh, expedite this particular matter as quickly as possible. It actually does seem somewhat nonsensical um, that the council has removed um, a, a shipping container that I assume belonged to the council, but yet now the council can't re replace its own shipping container um, uh, uh, and people can't, can't use it for storage. Um, I have also uh, spoken to representatives of, of Trojans 
actually only just yesterday. And I do understand the council are, 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 are doing their best to try and accommodate uh, and have provided uh, and helped with uh, so, uh, an alternative storage option. I know it's not perfect, um, uh, but again, uh, my view on this would be uh, to uh, support um, uh, junior football clubs like Trojans, uh, football clubs who, uh, as others pointed out, uh, are um, providing opportunities for well in excess of 400, 500 uh, young people. Uh, every week, so um, that that's my view on it. That be the, that's the view of the SDLP as well. In there, uh, but again, noting noting the, the legal position um, and uh, noting that officers clearly are as frustrated as elected members uh, as well. Um, so really, my encouragement would be, and I expect that this will happen anyway. That this matter is expedited as quickly as possible, and that the first element of of um, Councillor Doyle's. Uh, uh, proposal there to bring forward a report as brought forward um, uh, as quickly as possible to uh, to the next committee, the next relevant committee as well, Mayor. So uh, fully in support uh, of Tro Trojans Football Club, fully in support of their desire to have uh, storage facilities. They're a fantastic uh, football club. I've, I've known them since I was a boy. Um, didn't play for them, but play, played against them very many times. Um, they were uh, great rivals of another football club that I played for in Cregan. So um, uh, I, th I think that's 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 basically spelling it out in black and white from from an SDLP perspective. Mayor, thank you. Thank you, Councillor Boyle. Um, Councillor O'Neill. Uh, thanks, Mayor. Um, and I won't speak too long on this either because I think all the issues have been covered. But just to express people for profit's frustration, you know, about this uh, situation also, and our full support, um, you know, that this is resolved and for. Uh, Trojan Football Club to get on with what they're doing, which is um a great community service and in, in coaching young footballers, um and engaging uh young people in sport, um you know which which uh like the value of that um really can't be uh, there can't be a number put on it. So um like we need to do, to do all we can just to get this issue resolved. Thanks. Thank you, Councillor Neil, Councillor Donnelly. Can I have it, Chair? And again, just to uh, echo the statements of the previous uh, speaker there about how important Trojan uh, Football Club is to the areas like Cregan, uh, and you know, and how important sport is to young people, young people who are marginalised. And the ironic thing about this is, is that you know, many people, it, it would be unfortunate that what many people believe is the result of dodgy land deals by dodgy chief executives in Causeway Coast and Glen, uh, overlooked by fake accountability bodies and political representatives on that council, that the people who will suffer as a result of that will be the lack of working class football clubs in, 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 in Cregan. It's absolutely unbelievable. You know, the people involved in, 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 in these dodgy deals, rather than them, you know, coming out in handcuffs, People, young people in Craigan have to pay the price. But just want to reiterate my support for Trojans. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Donnelly. Um, Councillor Doyle. Thanks, Mayor. I'm grateful to Philip for his for his advice. Uh, it's obviously a very complex issue. Can I just clarify something with him? Whenever in my motion, when it refers to storage facilities free of charge, having spoken to the club this week, um, those are. The, the facilities that I'm referring to, and maybe I should have been clearer, is they are currently and have been offered use of the changing rooms um, up at Craigan, um, which um, they're happy enough with, uh, given that it's a long term uh, arrangement. But again, they've been told that that, is, uh, that will be uh, done at a cost. Now, in, in terms of what Philip is saying about disposal of land, I can understand that. But if we're talking about a room within a facility that we already own. Surely there will be a difference with that. And if you know, if I need to clarify that in the motion, I'm happy to do that. But that's the current position as I understand it. So what I'm suggesting is that those rooms which are in a building that we already own uh, are given without cost to Trojans for the foreseeable future. Uh, because again, to compound the craziness of this, what we're now telling people is that if they want to store facility store it in a facility that council and repairs own that they will have to pay for it um, as a result of something the council did. Um, so if, if we could have that clarified, Mayor, I'd really appreciate it. Thank you. 
Thanks, Richard. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry, somebody is not muted. Derek, 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 uh, where they have provided uh, this much needed uh, lock up facility for the, this clubs that is serving the community for many, many years. Um, and they were uh, um, misled, not intentionally, I, I hope, but they, nevertheless, they were, they were misled um, in that a new one would be uh, replaced with them four or five days. So therefore, I would be very uh, keen for a report to be brought on uh, to Council uh, the next month on how we can get this resolved. Um, in the meantime, I would be uh, proposing that uh, every help is given to children's uh, football team uh, with the storage of their uh, of their uh, equipment uh, free of charge until uh, this is concluded. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Logue and um, the city, uh, the chief executive is actually going to come in, but I would just like to point out this is an example of a proposal that's been brought forward um, without seeking advice prior to it. I would advise if you're going to bring a proposal that you run a past the city solicitor first, um, and then you can maybe get some clarity in relation to the wording or how it's presented um, prior to the meeting. But I'm going to bring in the chief executive. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Um, Mayor, just, just to say very simply that um, we will bring a report on this matter into the relevant committee as soon as possible. And in between now and then, we will continue to liaise with the club uh, to explain the situation and to see what else we can do um, to alleviate the situation in the meantime, but we will bring um, a full report in uh, from. I'm sorry, Jason Barr. Mayor, thanks very much. For allowing me under chair's business on this uh, issue has to do with the uh, Lusky Road uh, site, the old Straban Academy site in Straban. So, just this week, the Education Authority has finally taken the decision that they don't need the old Lusky site road uh, for educational uh, provision. It is now uh, nearly three and a half years since the site became vacant, and it has taken 13 months to reject the plan for an education other than a school provision for the site. The SDLP are of the view that these delays and dullering are totally unacceptable and an increase. And, and, and increases the possibility that these buildings will be lost to the local community. The SDLP's preference would be to see a community asset transferred to the council so that the local community can use this site, which would be much needed for the Straban area. So we need the council to express their interest in this site now, and that the EA, now that the EA deem this site surplus to their requirements. So, Mayor, I have a short proposal to run the chat box. Uh, if you would allow it, please. Councillor Barr, I'm actually not going to allow that um, proposal to come forward. It's a really substantial proposal. It involves um, council commitment in terms of finances. I think that it could be brought as a notice of motion, um, perhaps to next month's council. But I think at this stage, um, I'm not going to allow that motion um, to come forward. I see that you have a seconder there, but I'm, I'm going to roll out that proposal at this stage. And I'm going to bring in Councillor Paul Gawker. Well, Mayor, if it's not on the floor, I, I'll, I'll keep my powder dry. <laughs> so if, if, you're, if it's not going ahead, if it goes ahead, I'm happy to speak. But if it's not, I'll keep it dry. 
Okay, Councillor Gallagher, um, Councillor Michaela Boyle. Yeah, thank you, Mayor. And obviously, um, you uh, did indeed indicate that you don't want this to go ahead and that you would rather it come for council to uh, to council as a motion. Um, I do have thoughts on it. Um, so again, if Councillor Barr is going to bring it forward um, as a motion to possibly the next council uh, in a meeting in, a, in November, I'm happy to leave it at that also. Thank you, Mayor. And hear you, Mayor. Sorry, we're just having a, a problem, um, members, with the uh, mayor's computer. Um, just give us a wee moment. Thank you. Apologies. I am back online. I don't know what's going on there, but Michaela, apologies. I think I missed a bit of what you said. Um, but I'll move on to um, Alderman Hussey. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Whilst uh, respecting uh, the determination. Um, I would have concerns as to time scales when it comes to this um, sort of activity of uh, expressing interest uh, in particular community transfer assets. Um, and I would trust that we will be able to effect this in November. Uh, you know, we're, we're pushing it further down the line, and, and that always uh, presents difficulties. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Alderman Hussey. Um, I bring in Councillor Edwards. Mayor, thank you very much. And just to echo Alderman Hussey there, I think uh, while I respect your decision, Mayor, completely, I think time is of the essence. This issue has been ongoing for a number of years now. It's not a, a new issue, especially to the sort of the Strabane District. Um, Councillor, it's not a new issue. And if we if we've learned anything from the Castler Police Station. Uh, debacle. Uh, I said we need to move on these issues quickly. So hopefully we can get it back into um, back into council as soon as possible. But I just wanted to make those comments, Mayor. Thank you. Thank you, um, Councillor Edwards. And I will move on and hopefully we will see that come back in, in November. So thank you, Councillor Barr, for raising it. Um, next issue is from Councillor Donnelly. Um, over to you. Am I of it, Chair? Uh, Chair, look, it just uh, the last few weeks has uh, seen a number of great achievements in uh, Irish sporting circles, and I would like to put on uh, record uh, appreciation and, and support for uh, the Irish Women's uh, Soccer Club, who, who qualified for the 2023 FIFA World Cup. It was a historic occasion, it's the first time the team have uh, qualified for a major tournament. And I'd also like to uh, mention the Irish cricket team, who who also qualified for the T20 World Cup, again, in our historic moment. And they had a historic one over England just within the last few days. Uh, and also in, in, in boxing uh, circles, Padraig McCrory won his light heavyweight IBO world title fight uh, to be crowned world champion. And in the, on the same uh, sport, the Team Ireland had been the, the best team at the Women's European Boxing Championship in Montenegro, won in three gold and two silver. And uh, again, not, not quite on the world stage, but nevertheless very important to the citizens and, and the council. I'd like to wish the best of luck to Derry City Football Club as they take on Shelburne in the FAA Cup Final on the 13th of November. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Donnelly, for raising all those many successes. And I would like to join with you in saying my congratulations and I suppose with a particular sense of pride um, in terms of the women boxers um, who were awarded the best team um, at the World Championship. So that was um, that was fantastic. And as somebody who has a massive interest in, interest in boxing, um, Potty as well, we'll send congratulations to him, but absolutely everybody and um, and best wishes to um, Derry City as they move forward to the cup final. Um, there's a number of speakers that wish to come in on this, so um, Alderman Devaney. 
Thank you, Mayor, for um, allowing me in. And just on the previous speaker, uh, as I've said before uh, at committee meetings, I have no problem uh, in supporting those who succeed uh, in sport. Um, sport is always something that brings us together. And look, um, there are many, um, as just been mentioned, have won awards and acclaims. Uh, uh, and you know, you have to say congratulations to them. Uh, and look, Mayor, I had no problem uh, in supporting the the the. Irish women's team that, that had won a, a very, very difficult game and, you know, they've done a tremendous job. But I, I will go back. Um, uh, what I can't agree with um, and around that I've raised it before and around the, the Irish women's team was singing the sectarian chants of Ua up there uh, after they won. And, you know, I, I do take on board the girl that scored the one and goal, dedicated that goal to the the... the those who were bereaved in uh, 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 Krishna, uh, and we all passed on our sentiments and commiserations to those families. But, Mayor, uh, on behalf of um, the people that I represent uh, within the PUL community, see when those chants are made after, uh, it demises the great achievement that, that they had because many from our community would see this as dancing on the graves and mocking the deaths of those who were murdered. Um, during the, the, the campaign by the IRA. But look, Mayor, I will say it once again, um, our, our sporting achievements are excellent. And look, I wish them all the best uh, in the future. Uh, and uh, once again, I will say, we have to be careful um, when, when sport that we keep sectarianism out of it because there is no place in society for sectarianism, whether it be in, uh, in sport or politics or, or social lives. It should be kept out. But, Mayor, once again, well done to everybody except those comments um, and around the, the sectarian chanting. Thanks, Mayor. Thank you, Alderman Defeni. Councillor Doyle. Thanks, Mayor. Uh, just to uh, add my uh, congratulations to all those uh, achievements and all those uh, sports uh, that have made uh, fantastic strides forward over the last. A number of weeks and months, and I include Potty on that. Haven't seen that overnight. Um, disappointed, but not surprised that Morris has raised what he has, uh, given that uh, at this last council meeting, whenever his party were asked to condemn uh, people singing up to their necks in Fenian blood uh, at parades, he refused to do that. Um, look, people are going to sing songs. Um, I don't think it's for anybody in this council to tell them what they should and shouldn't be singing. Um, and then um, Again, shouldn't be brought up at this council. We should be focusing on people's achievements. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Doyle. Councillor Barr. Yeah, thanks again for letting me in. And just congratulations to all those that Councillor Donnie mentioned. I'd just like to mention a few of our own local um, stars here in Straban this week. Uh, a couple in particular, Cal McLaughlin, uh, who fought for Straban martial arts over in Wales this week, was crowned world champion in martial arts in his K1 fight just yesterday. And also young Ava Logue, who got a silver and a bronze over there. He, she fights under Kevin Logue's kick fit. And also Dennis Lafferty, who fought under Stavane Martial Arts, also um, got a bronze over there as well. And also mayor to the Shamrocks under 15 girls team, who were crowned champions also this week. Uh, so a big congratulations to them also, Mayor. And I know that myself and Councillor Stephen Edwards have requested yourself for two separate uh, mayor's receptions. So we'll be looking forward to getting a response no shortly and hopefully mayor that you'll be able to accommodate that to celebrate the successes of them mayor thanks very much thank you councillor barry yes i received that and they will be processed um alderman gay thank you mayor for letting me in and uh, i'd just like to take this opportunity as well to congratulate all the sportsmen and women um who have done well in their chosen sport um it's uh, sad to see, however, the Ladies Republic of Ireland team who uh, let themselves down in their celebrations. Um, yes, they were quick to condemn it, but it's something that shouldn't be happening at all. Um, I would like to say that uh, going back to uh, Councillor Donnelly and something that he has mentioned in the past, I do find it a very mischievous proposal that he's put towards the floor today. Uh, but no, no problem, no problem in that. Uh, Wishing them all the best and congratulating them. And I actually, I agree. I wish um, Derry City all the best in the cup final, the up and coming cup final. And uh, maybe when they have brought the cup home, then their chairman will uh, finally answer me as if I'm waiting six weeks and an answer about an issue that happened uh, at the Brandywell. 
Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Alderman Gay. Um, Councillor Ferguson. Thank you, Mary, and I would like to offer our congratulations to the, the multiple sporting uh, men and ladies who have done great things for um, the island and in our city and district. And, and Mary, I have put on record uh, my condemnation of the, the chance and how I have also um, commented on how bigger um, nationalist clubs, whether it be in football, whether it be rugby, have all been challenged with trying to tackle things like racism. And I think that it's our duty as a city and district and, and as a people to challenge sectarianism where it is. But Mayor, I was coming in actually to highlight one other person. And I know this list is getting longer, but um, I, I seen there recently this week that we have, after eight weeks of being appoint, appointed by team presidents, we have um, leading martial arts duo, Michael and Fanine Bradley have led team Northern Ireland to 13 medal hall at the World Championship of Kickball. Boxing. So I just wanted to add them to the list of congratulations because I know they work really, really hard and they are bringing a lot of great talent up through the ranks um, and hopefully will lead the Northern Ireland team to a, um, a gold medal in the coming years. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Ferguson. Councillor O'Neill. Uh, thank you, Mayor. And just to uh, uh, echo the congratulations from people before profit. Uh, to all the brilliant sporting achievements, uh, you know, from the from the women's World Cup team to the Irish cricket team to the to the boxers and uh, and of course the Derry City uh, Soccer Club, um, and and their final, uh, a massive good luck to them. Uh, and I think uh, you know these achievements uh, are are particularly uh, uh, celebrated you know, for women's sport because you know women have had to come up against so much in terms of like. Uh, building these sporting achievements and the Irish women's soccer team in particular had to go on strike in 2019 um, against unfair conditions and unequal uh, treatment uh, to their male counterparts and I, I find it very very frustrating that the this massive achievement from Ireland's uh, soc women's soccer team uh, keeps being uh, shadowed and uh, and, and uh, uh, criticised um, by people who have never talked about a uh, woman in sport, never talked about women in football. Uh, people have never had an opinion or said a good word or done anything to support uh, women in sport. Uh, and I think the reaction has been completely disproportionate. Um, and I, I think there's also hypocrisy from UEFA who are carrying out an investigation under this, who are supporting the World Cup in Qatar, who uh, are responsible for uh, human rights abuses to gay people, the gay footballers, which is a massive, massive issue. And you know, people for profit, are, of course, for sports without sectarianism. Um, but if you know this reaction uh, for the women's uh, soccer team has been uh, very, very disproportionate. Thanks. Thank you, Councillor Neil. And I would remind people just to try and stay within the limits of um, allocated speaking time. Um, Councillor Gallagher. Thank you, Mayor. Um, just following on from from uh, the previous speaker, Mayor, would it be possible that the council would send out good wishes and good luck to the science Swiss ladies who are playing in the final next week, the Challenge Cup, I, uh, and against Glen Torn. So, like, uh, like the previous says around engagement and, and sport and particularly promoting women. I think that the council should be wishing a local team all the best. Thank you, Mayor. No issue with that, Councillor Gallagher. Um, and I, I can action that and I, I agree. Um, we, we had a presentation from Sport Ireland, Sport NI um, and other bodies in relation to women in sport and how um, you have to see it to be it. So 100%. Um, Councillor Jackson. Good Mayor, and just on behalf of Sam Fain, just want to um, echo the the words of celebration or congratulation to all the sporting uh, achievements right across the island. And um, I suppose particularly I'm here in the city and around Wishing um, Derry City all the best in the cup final on the 13th. Um, but in, in particular in relation to the the women in sport and Councillor O'Neill touched on it. Um, that there's these achievements have come on the back of of overcoming uh, adversity, and um, that that needs that needs to be reflected in terms of the the scale of the achievements that they've made. 
and no amount of deflection um, within this chamber or outside can take away from the those great achievements. So um, it's it's brilliant to see sport um, grow right across our island, and the the and and hopefully we'll see much more achievements in the years ahead. But um, and on behalf of our party, we just want to echo the comments of support. Cheers, Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Jackson. And final speaker on this issue is Councillor or Alderman Kerrigan. Thank you very much, Mayor, for allowing me in. And uh, we do uh, again, as Alderman Devaney has expressed, the the uh, congratulation and, and the well done. And uh, again, the the uh, hopefully successes has been re referred to there by Councillor Gallagher in regards to Cyan Swifts, uh, the ladies team. And that, and we do congratulate all the teams and all the individuals who have success connected with our council district. And again, uh, I would just uh, follow on from that there. On uh, we have a young fellow there, uh, Jake Sproul, and uh, from Castle Derek, who will be captain of the Northern Ireland darts team as they go out into Gibraltar. And uh, that was one issue, Mayor. Just to, uh, touch on it very briefly. Uh, when Sport and I were in. Uh, darts is one that is not funded and is not designated as a sport that's eligible to get funding. So I just have concerns in regards to that. So maybe we'll have a discussion with you in, in the future in regards to that and, and wish them as these young fellas there, these under 17s go out and, and represent our, our country out there. The, the, the other four, the other three fellas are from uh, uh, East Antrim direction. But um, no, just one wee point, you know, again, congratulate the teams and as we did state uh, when it was raised at the ENR committee uh, chair just after the incident uh, you, you know I, I know members have raised proportionate and what's proportionate and this that and the other but you know there are concerns regards to all these actions and all these individuals who are taking up roles in regards to sport they are role models for our young people and we all have to be cautious in what we come out and say and we do have to be very cautious in the harm that it can cause and the frustration it can cause and how it can mock people so uh, just, you know, it may well be a bit of entertainment or a bit of celebrating, but we just have to be mindful of our language, Mayor. But uh, thank you very much, Mayor. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Kerrigan. And I'm happy to have any conversation with you regarding sports, so no problem at all. Um, moving on, just in terms of next per person for chairperson's business, and it is Alderman Devaney, and I believe you want to make a change in relation to committees. Thank you, Chair. Our Mayor, I, I, I do apologise. Um, I didn't get the nomination sorted out, and I will come back as soon as I get a nomination. Sorry about that, Mayor. No problem. Um, Councillor Tierney on the same, wanting to make a change to committee. Yes, Mayor, thank you. Um, can I change Councillor John Boyle um, off the board of CCA and replace him with Councillor Lillian Sinoy Barr, please? And Mayor, just in terms of um, trying to get this sorted out, the the next meeting of CCA, I understand, is early next week. So if they could be notified that Councillor Barr will be at Sinoy Barr, sorry, um, will be attending in the place of Councillor Boyle. That would be uh, very, very useful. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Tierney. I'm sure that will be actioned. Um, next item is um, Councillor O'Neill. Thank you, Mayor. Um, so this is just to uh, give information and, and support really uh, for two rallies that are happening this weekend, um, which are both woman led uh, and they're addressing the inequalities that women here are facing. Uh, so one is the Unite Women Demand Better protest, which is actually in, in City Hall in Belfast. And it's come off the back of the campaign to save Belfast's only uh, supported living hostel for women um, whose doors were shut there without uh, proper intervention from the Minister for Communities. And then the other one um, is the March of the Mommies, uh, which is happening in Derry on Saturday um, at noon, gathering at the Peace Garden to march uh, over to Everton Square. Um, so you know, this is a protest organised by mommies, grannies um, and, um, and aunties uh, to, to try and like highlight the, the, the burden and the weight uh, that the cost of loving crisis is having uh, disproportionately on the shoulders of mommies who are struggling to heat their homes and feed their wains. Uh, and, you know, like council, I feel, should support their call for better services, resources, uh, rights and pay. So just to kind of like briefly uh, let uh, members know the demands from the March of the Mommies are for free and accessible health care uh, and increase to maternity pay and family leave, um, for sick pay and carers leave for all workers who either are employed or self-employed, uh, for higher wages and more flexible working arrangements for those with care and responsibilities, an end of the gender pay gap, 
in the two child benefit cap um, and accessible and informed reproductive and uh, sexual health care. Um, so, uh, like, I just have a short proposal just to um, support the march and support their demands. It's not, um, hopefully, it's it's okay. Uh, um, we we can uh, um, consider it. Thanks. Thank you, um, Councillor O'Neill. And um, I had hoped to attend the the march of the mummies on Saturday, but I have another engagement here at twelve. But I would hope to. Um, meet up with them after that. In terms of the proposal, um, Councillor Nate, I'm actually not going to take it because there is a substantial amount in the proposal or in the, the demands of, of the march, which I know will open this meeting up to significant debate. Um, whilst I'm happy to support the, the march and will hopefully attend, um, maybe not at the start, but towards the end, I think that the proposal, while it's contained within the demands, will open this meeting up to significant debate. So, unfortunately, on this occasion, I'm not going to take the proposal, but I'm happy for the information to be shared with um, members if they wish to attend the, the march. So, thank you, um, Councillor Neil, for bringing that forward. Um, moving on, the next item for Chairperson's Business is um, Councillor Harkin. Thank you. Uh, Mayor, for letting me in, and uh, can we, as people before profit, also extend our condolences and solidarity to uh, Councillor McGowan on the passing of his mother uh, and to his e extended family as well? Um, uh, yeah. So look, the I, I've been contacted and talking to Seagate workers now for quite a while, um, who have raised concerns about um, uh, a very low pay increase that they received. Uh, recently, uh, in terms of dealing with the cost of living crisis, um, and there was people might have read that more than 400 Seagate workers signed a letter uh, expressing their disappointment to management and also uh, requesting trade union recognition um, uh, for a trade union voice. And I think that these are all uh, things that we can empathise with and should support right now, uh, given everything that we know workers are facing right across our society. And I want to thank the um, elected representatives who agreed to sign the letter uh, to Seagate management that has been sent off to them. And I would encourage um, all our representatives who haven't yet signed that letter to um, get in touch uh, and sign it, um, because uh, workers at Seagate need our support now. They've needed our support, and they definitely need our support now. People may have seen that uh, Seagate have announced that they're going to lay off something um, uh, eight percent of their global workforce, which is up to three thousand workers, and that has created a lot of concern and worry among workers here in Derry and in the Northwest. And as we know, Seagate is a very important employer, a very big employer, um, and I think it's incumbent upon us to make it clear to Seagate workers that we're going to support them in whatever way we can, uh, that we support them in terms of their pay demands and their right to have trade union representation um, and that we'll do whatever we can to ensure that none of the layoffs are happening here in Derry. So I want to propose a very basic proposal that we uh, meet, that uh, elected representatives from each of the party parties meet with the workers and we can have a council officer there uh, and meet with work, Seagate workers and, and trade union represent, representatives. And I'm happy to put that into the chat group, Mayor. So this is just a proposal for a meeting that um, each of the political parties and uh, independents uh, could send representatives along, uh, and we meet with the workers, and they're happy to. The workers are happy to organise this meeting uh, with trade union representatives. And I'll put that in the chat. And so, Harkin, I'm just waiting to see the proposal.
Okay, we have a proposer and a seconder. Is there anyone who wishes to speak to this proposal? Just can I say a few words? Just, yeah. Uh, no, look, I, I like uh, Councillor Hart. I've, I've been contacted by some workers, and uh, you know, this eight percent. I think it represents almost eight thousand jobs, and, and it, I think it's a bit early. They don't actually know if if uh, how many of them or if any of them is going to be from the city here. Uh, so just just to put on record my support for for the the the, the Seagate workers, and uh, you know, in their attempts to 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 unionize the workforce despite resistance and opposition from from uh, the management. So happy to second uh, Councillor Harkins' proposal. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Tierney. Mayor, just to, I suppose formally put um, on record our support um, for Councillor Har Harkins' uh, proposal. Uh, we're always happy to engage uh, with workers and with trade union representatives, um, and this is no different. So I'm happy to support it, and I look forward to if it passes today. Obviously, look forward to to having that discussion. Thank you. Okay, Councillor Jackson. Um, thanks, Mayor, and I suppose some final I'll support the motion. Um, we are in regular contact. We we see get, see get workers. Um, we and. If there's anything that we can do, they that that isn't a gimmick, um, or an election stunt, um, we'll we'll do it. Um, see, so, so you get some major employer within our city and district, and um, I, I I I know that quite a lot of the the workers within Seagate know that they've got this council support. Um, so if it's another way for us, they they emphasize that and reinforce that, then we're fully supportive of it. Thanks, Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Jackson. Alderman Devaney. Thank you, Mayor, for um, allowing me in. Uh, and look, we have no problem uh, in supporting discussions um, with any big employer um, within the city uh, and district. The, the only thing, Mayor, I, I would add on to that is probably, you know, where we ask councillors and council officers. I believe um, our, our MLAs um, should be invited to that too uh, and around that discussion. Um, for to let them know the wider impact on around it. So, look, uh, all I'm asking is to include uh, um, MLAs on that if Councillor Harkin was happy enough. Um, okay, our Alderman Tavena, you haven't made a proposal, um, but I have a proposal here on the floor that is um, proposed and seconded. And I also have Alderman Hussey in the chat box looking to make a amendment. So I'm going to bring it in, Alderman Hussey. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Just a brief amendment. Um, Alderman Devaney there did reference, you know, meeting with Seagate. Uh, the the proposal on the table is to meet with the workers and trade union representatives. Um, I, I think it would be important that we would engage also with management on the issue um, to to get the whole story. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, propose the amendment. Thank you, Alderman Hussey. Um, seconder to the amendment. I'll second it, Alderman Devaney. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so we have an amendment on the floor. Um, Mr. Harkin, to the amendment. Thanks, Mayor. Yeah, sorry, but, sorry, yeah, Councillor well, Harkin. Um, I, I have Alderman McCready in the chat box first. Overlooked him. Sorry. Go ahead, Alderman McCready. Thanks, Mayor. I support the motion and indeed the. Uh, amendment that's uh, on here now, um, standing with our workforce in a time where you know, th there's there's gross economic uncertainty. Um, I, I do take exception to Alderman Devaney's point about inviting our MLAs, where I think that's part of the problem. Large organisations and businesses which employ so many want and yearn and need political stability in order to have economic st stability. So, uh, uh, you know, th there's incongruencies between bringing MLAs who are not sitting in Stormont, uh, governing locally, and we're here at council level picking up the pieces. But as it is, it stands at the moment. Um, happy to, to support both uh, as we see it and give as much fight and chance and try and reassure, um, based on facts and not hope, um, that we can kind of secure jobs and at least from a, a local authority's perspective. Have a strong working relationship with both the management and indeed, you know, those that are, are fighting for their jobs because we're the last line of defence. Regrettably, thanks, Mayor. 
Thank you, Alderman Crady. Um, Councillor Harkin on the amendment. Yeah, look, um, I, I, I would agree that it'd be great if MLAs and our, the, the FOIL MP agreed to come along as well. And if, if, we, if they want to come, they should be invited or they should just come to the meeting uh, when it gets organised. Um, I think that workers at Seagate and workers across our district want to see their political representatives standing up and defending them right now. And this is no stunt. Uh, this has been going on for months now. And, uh, you know, Seagate workers have been organising for months around uh, trying to get a cost of living pay raise, trying to get trade union representation in order to uh, help with that. And now they're faced with the uncertainty of uh, potential layoffs, which we hope don't happen here because uh, the, the, you know, our workforce here uh, do an excellent job. Um, but I think that we should be, my, my only thing about meeting with management, I have absolutely no problem with that, um, is that I think we should meet with the workers and trade union representatives first. So we have an idea uh, what we want to talk to management about. Uh, so I would say if we do agree to meet with management, it should be after we meet with the workers uh, and trade union representatives. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Harkin. Um, I don't hear anyone speaking against the amendment, so I'm going to assume the amendment has support of the chamber. Yeah, okay. So that becomes now the substantive motion, um, and I haven't heard anyone talk against the substantive motion either. So if we're happy enough, we can accept that proposal as passed and close that discussion. Okay, thank you, folks. Um, moving on to the body of the meeting, which is the confirmation of the open minutes of the meeting of Council held on Thursday, the 29th of September. Um, can I get a proposer and seconder for accuracy? Proposer, Oliver Devaney. I second it. Present. Present. Thank you. Thank you. Um, any matters arising from the minutes? Um, Alderman Hussey. Uh, thank you, Mayor. On 370, on page 19, flooding incidents, uh, I know this was only at the last meeting, but uh, we're heading into further deepening and clement weather. Has there been any response from the DFI with regard to the list requested of gully cleaning undertaken to date? Chair, would you like me to come in on that? Um, thank you, Chair. And through you, uh, members, we have received um, the, the information from uh, DFI. It's quite a large um, IT document. So we're in the process. Kerry's been a liaison with um, with IT and, and member services to set up a link so members can actually access that directly themselves to be able to look at it. So it, it's in process. They've sent it this just, I think, two days ago, and we've been trying to get with IT a link set up so members can actually access it directly. Thank you, Chair. That's appreciated, Mary. Thank you. Thank you, Karen. Um, Councillor Donnelly, is yours on three seventy? No, it's not. Uh, it's it's on uh, C three five nine forward slash twenty two. Okay, I'm going to bring in Councillor Neil first then, because she is on the same item as um, Alderman Hussey. Okay. Uh, thanks, Mary. It's just with regards to the flooding as well, and there was just a report uh, released this week about the huge volume of untreated uh, sewage. That's being dumped under our waterways every year. Now, like um, I had raised this before when DFI had released the original figures uh, of seven million tons uh, going under our waterways, but uh, just uh, more evidence there has shown that that was actually a significant underestimate. So seven million tons was awful, but you know God knows how bad the problem is because uh, the difficulty is um, the uh, NI water because of the lack of resources that's gone under that aren't properly monitoring. Uh, the amount of sewage water that's uh, that's going under our waterways. Uh, so our council area uh, is, is particularly um, kind of at risk really because uh, we're not actually on the map from DFA. Um, you know, so it's not that there's no problem here, but there's no knowledge of what the problem is here um, because they haven't conducted the drainage area studies 
Um, so, you know, this is obviously of public health concern um, and, you know, it, it really is of massive concern. So I, I just wanted to propose that we write to NA Water and DFA just for like an update on um, the monitoring uh, progress uh, and kind of actions that they're taking, you know, on this issue. Um, so I hope that's okay. Thank you, Councillor Neil. I'm happy just to take that proposal. Um, we'll we'll get that action. Um, Councillor Gallagher, is it on three seventy? No. No. Okay. Back to Thanks. um Councillor Donnelly then. Uh, Graham Malga, Chair, Chair C three five nine forward slash twenty two. Uh, regarding the council holds and minutes, saying is to reflect to reflect on the recent bereavements. Chair, I, I spoke extensively at that regarding my position regarding the British monarch as a, a, a socialist republican. And uh, I think when, you know, the UUP in an earlier item when this said about people being mischievous, I believe that this was a mischievous effort by the UUP there uh, to include the, the British monarch. As a result of that, Chair, I left the meeting during that minute's silence, so I just would like that reflected. I didn't get a chance to speak and I don't want to rehash it here, but I would like it if the record could note that I left during that. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Councillor Donnelly. That's noted. Um, Councillor Gallagher. Mayor, it's, it's on the same uh, vein. Mayor, because of the sort of circumstances that we, we find ourselves in uh, over Zoom, uh, we couldn't physically leave a meeting, so I left the meeting as well, if it could be recorded as well. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Gallagher. That is also noted. And Alderman Jose, apologies. I see that you had a second item that I skipped over. So um, back to yourself. Thank you, Mayor. It's the immediate next one. It's under the title of Hardship Fund, but it's in relation to uh, Northern Air Housing Executive. And what I had understood was that they no longer appeared or replace solar heating panels, uh, which they had installed in tenants' properties. Um, those who, who were there when NIHE presented to uh, GNSP will be aware that the officials from Northern Ireland Housing Executive seemed surprised uh, when I asked with regard to the cessation of repair of solar panels and they asked for information to be to be forwarded. I've done that, but it's just to alert all members that if they have electors in their area who find themselves in that position, to immediately inform uh, Northern Ireland Housing Executive that there are damaged or uh, solar panels not working. Uh, I think that needs to be made clear. Uh, the Housing Executive themselves in, in the meeting were surprised and asked uh, that they be made aware of where this was happening. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Hussey. Um, Councillor O'Neill. Uh, thanks, Mayor. And it's just kind of in relation to the cost of loving. I, I was at a meeting, uh, you know, in the last month of uh, about the student cost of loving fight back. So I just wanted to highlight that uh, students are organising um, a campaign and it's it's called the cost of survival, really. Uh, and it was launched by NU, NUC USA. Um, and they're called they're calling for kind of three different demands are calling for a cost of love and payment for students and both higher and further education a rent freeze and accommodation both private and purpose-built and for free public transport for students uh, and i think you know students can often be forgotten in the cost of love and crisis and it's often uh, parents or guardians who um are trying to as well support themselves support uh, student their you know their children through education um and you know for students their like loans and grants have remained the same since 2010 uh there's been no increase and in, uh no targeted support for students um and as a as a result students health conditions are um being exacerbated by the crisis um and you know their education ultimately um and i so i just wanted to highlight that the campaign exists exists and uh to encourage support thanks Thank you, Councillor Neil, for that information. Um, no further speakers in relation to that. So moving on then to the confirmation of the open minutes of the special meeting held on Friday the 7th of October. Um, and I'm going to, oh, no, I'll have to take it this way. Um, can I get a proposer and seconder for accuracy? I'll propose to Alderman Devaney. Seconded. 
Rachel Lerman. Councillor Ferguson, thank you. Um, matters arising. Okay, um, moving on then to item 10, confirmation of the open minutes of the special meeting held on Wednesday, the 19th of October. Um, could I get a proposer and seconder? No proposed, Alderman Devaney. Thank you. Seconder? I'll second it. Thank you, Alderman Bresson. Uh, any matters you're raising? No matters you're raising. Okay, moving on then to the adoption of the open minutes of the committee. So starting with um, audit, which was held on the 26th of September. Um, could I get a proposer and seconder for accuracy? I'll propose, Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Logue. Um, seconder? Michaela. Oh, Michaela, thank you. Um, any matters arising? Okay, um, moving on to the special meeting of ENR held on Tuesday, the 27th of September. If I could get a proposer and seconder for accuracy. So proposed, Alderman Devaney. Thank you. Seconder? I'll second it, Alderman Kerrigan. Thank you. Um, any matters arising? Okay, monthly governance and strategic planning held on the 4th of October. I propose that one. I'll um, second, Mayor. Thank you. Um, and matters arising, um, Councillor Ferguson. Thank you, Mayor. And just really quickly, Mayor, this is around the TransLink. Um, I ate him on GSP. Um, Mayor, it's just to, to kind of say I, I had a meeting with TransLink there recently and um, it was raised to me concerns around the A6 park and ride with uh, residents in Claudie. And the park and ride itself, you can park the bus will stop and pick you up and take you on to Belfast to 212. And what it was raised to me by residents was you can park and ride and, and get on the bus, but you can't come out from the city to Claudie and get off the bus you're not allowed to because of timings for the 212. And I raised this with um, TransLink and said, could they consider letting residents get off at that park and ride to access Claudie because it would be encouraging green transport it's obviously you know getting people on the bus and it's it's making it more accessible unfortunately their concerns is the timing around the 212 and making it as express as anything again i said logically that doesn't make sense as the bus is going to have to stop every two hours anyway for the parking right so it might as well let people off so i'm just saying asking me whenever officers are having conversations with translink or that it is raised that it is illogical for a bus to stop to let people on but won't let people out um, and it would be beneficial to residents in Claudia to have that access to the bus as well. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Ferguson. Um, Alder Devaney on this item. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, uh, and I thank Councillor Ferguson for bringing this forward. Um, it is an issue that has been raised with myself. Um, I was out around that Claudia area um, over the weekend. Um, there was an issue also raised, um, Mayor, and around... Um, the last train um, coming in to the city at around 6.20, but the bus that leaves for that area leaves at 6.15 and goes out, and anyone coming in on the train um, doesn't have the transport out to Claudia. But maybe that could be added on to um, the concerns that um, Councillor Ferguson has raised. It's just the train coming in at 20 past six. The bus is away at a quarter past six. If there could be some, you know, delay for about five or ten minutes to allow people off the train and be able to get that service back home, especially out to that rural area in Claudie, uh, as we know there is very little um, public transport available to our rural communities out there. But w I'm sure you'd be happy to get on board. Thank you, Alderman Devaney. Yep, all legitimate issues um, for Translink. Um, Councillor Jackson. Thanks, Mayor. Mayor, um, coming on on GSP 160, it's in relation to council meeting arrangements. Mayor, at the at the committee, the committee recommended that that there be um changes to some of the committee arrangements, and and in the recommendation, um, in part two, it it relates to. Full council meetings being split across two meetings on Wednesday and a Thursday for a pilot period of three months, and given the time of year that we're coming into, um, that, um, those three months 
will uh, span over the, the winter months. I'm going to make a, a small addition to that and request that um, that during that pilot period that the full council meetings would start at 2 p.m. I'm just uh, out of interest for anybody that's traveling and avoid uh, avoiding anybody having to travel in the winter months um, in, in late on the evening. So uh, it's it's a very small addition, and it's just they add under part two of that recommendation is that the full council meetings would start at two p.m. Thanks, Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Jackson, and I see that um, Councillor Doyle has seconded it, and I see that um, Alderman Hussey has said he's happy to support. I bring in Councillor Tierney on this issue. Thank you, um, and thanks to Councillor Jackson um, for bringing up um, this uh, actual paper. Um, and I know Councillor Jackson pointed out that um, this is a small change, um, and it may well be a small change in, in terms of two years, but that particular two years um, could be difficult um, for people um, who are already working, and it's quite, um, in, in my view, um, it's quite a change um, in that regard, um, and it probably would have been best that we had to discuss this um, at the particular committee. Um, and I would prefer um, that we had um, given uh, councillors the opportunity um, to make alternative arrangements um, with their, their, their other employers, um, as this is coming in um, this month, um, if it's ratified today. Um, and I think we need to give people um, an opportunity uh, to have those discussions with their employers and to make alternative arrangements. Thank you. Okay, Councillor Ferguson. Mayor, again, I understand where Councillor Jackson's coming from, and and to a degree, I, I agree with it. I think these council meetings can get very long, and and it's it is coming into the dark winter periods. But there are like Councillor Tierney, I, I have concerns around other uh, responsibilities, for example, their boards and stuff that may clash with the start of that. So, um, I would appreciate um a bit more discussion around it and and checking with councillors and, and their availability in that sense but um apart from that mayor look I'm, I'm happy to give anything a trial um and, and see how it works but I, I do have concerns about bringing it forward at a last minute kind of amendment thank you okay um councillor Gallagher thank you mayor I, I'm happy to support councillor Jackson's proposal and I I would just like to comment on councillor Tierney's comments. Uh, Councillor Tierney had no bother last year then when it came up around uh, pay raises for councillors. He had no bother uh, of saying refusing them because he, he had a second job and when he was bringing forward those proposals he didn't consult with councillors on here that may have only one income and that being their sole income coming from council allowance. He no bother then saying, I'm not giving you a pay raise or you a pay raise or you a pay raise. Didn't consult with them at that stage. So those that are double jabbing, I make your own arrangements. Two o'clock's good. Alderman Devaney. Thank you, Mayor, for allowing me in. Uh, and or, we, we have no problem uh, in um, the, the, the two o'clock, the trial for um, the three months. But I do take on board, uh, I think it was um, Councillor Tierney's concern, and those, and those, and look, it's not all about double job, and some people have jobs, uh, and that's the way it is. Um, but we have other councillors here, maybe who have caring responsibilities, uh, um, you know, whether it be grandchildren or even children, or maybe uh, an adult or someone like that there. Uh, and I do believe this sort of discussion should have taken place when we're making the decisions around it. But the, the, the only thing, look, I, I'm happy to support the two o'clock uh, and give it a trial, but just to have the concerns around that. And I still have the concerns then around the, the, the what was agreed about the limited conditions for those who maybe want to um, attend the meeting online. Um, and, you know, this, I, I think the limited conditions here, I think, Mayor, for this day of work, we should have been all allowed to decide whether we come to the guilt hall or we wanted to come online without having to we're nearly like the look we're nearly like having to go nearly to get a doctor's letter to get off attending the guilt hall 
and we have to have an excuse to some case. But sometimes it doesn't work out for people. It could be council related work or constituency work or something like that there, but it's always very, very handy. And I do find the difficulty and around the, the limited conditions, Mayor. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Devaney. Alderman Hussey. Uh, thank you, Mayor, and thank you to Councillor Jackson for picking up on this. Uh, this hasn't come out of the blue, Mayor. If members look at the report of the meeting in, in response to further query from myself, the Chief Executive advised that consideration had not been given to the possibility of Council and Committee meetings beginning at 2 p.m. Uh, then the last section of that, however, consideration could be given to such a possibility if members so wished. So since the last meeting, or since that meeting, Members have had time to consider it. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Alderman Hussey. Um, Councillor Tierney. And and I really don't want a back and forth in in the, the chamber today. So but Councillor Tierney, go ahead. Mayor, thank you. Um in relation to the to the suggestion from Councillor Jackson, although I had raised concerns um and I and I still stand over them, um I do think that people will struggle with childcare. Uh, with working responsibilities and, and things like that, but I've had a quick discussion with our members, um, and we, the majority of us, are quite happy. Um, so if the meetings are starting at two o'clock, the SDLP will be there, um, and we will be in the chamber. On Councillor Gallagher's point, if people had wanted wanted to vote against our suggestion around a pay rise last year, they were more entitled to do so, um, and they could have done so. They didn't do so, um, but they now want to come on at every meeting and complain that they didn't get it. Um, I wonder why, and whether I have two incomes or three incomes, it's no one else's business, only mine, and should not be discussed on an open meeting such as this. Thank you very much, Mayor, but we're happy to support Councillor Jackson's um, proposal. Thank you. Thank you, um, Councillor Jackson. Thanks, Mayor. And, and on the same vein of as Alderman Hussey, the, the 2 p.m. start was discussed at, the, at that meeting, and at the bottom of what page 135, it, it does state that um, I... I actually asked for this, along with uh, um, Alderman Hussey, for this to be considered. I specifically requested that that the, the arrangements for the planning committee would be replicated in terms of full council. And that was, again, the advice that we were received was just, that was a decision for members. I'm not a member of that committee. Um, this is my opportunity now to make that, that proposal. So um, that uh, it hasn't. It, it uh, I can maybe understand where some people are coming from, but but this this hasn't been a last minute proposal. This is something that had been discussed at length by different members at the committee. Thanks, Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Jackson, for clarity. Um, Alderman McCready. Mayor, yeah, I've had time to consider as well, and I suppose with this particular point, it's it is circumstantial, and you've forty members in there with varying different degrees of. Of circumstances, um, and as we do, if we're using the fourteen hundred two o'clock um, start for for some of these, then and it's a pilot scheme. I'd be very interested to get Nilga's uh, take on this because they experience a lot of these things throughout the eleven councils um, to kind of get their oversight. Because you know, specifically, irrespective of individual circumstances, um, you can actually create a barrier sometimes to to younger people or those in different ways, they actually want to be a councillor because council duties being elected is not classed as employment. It is additional duties. And because of the, the limited responsibilities we have in comparison to other councils uh, around the world, um, it, it is um, oh, it is part time for that reason, because we're not entrusted to deliver things like housing uh, and other things which are, are held at the departmental level. So I just don't want to create barriers. Uh, and let's not forget, come May next year, most of us won't be in this chamber and there'll be very different people coming in. So for us to set down, uh, if we do go through the pilot scheme, then it shouldn't be uh, fait accompli, where that those that are elected work into a policy that we set up for someone else. That that's, would be something I would have, a you know, it should be a term basis that needs to reset with new members. So happy to try anything new, um, but cognizant of individual circumstances whether that be financial commitments or anything else, but let's try and work together on this, please. Thanks, Mayor. Thank you, Alderman McCready. And I, I would agree with you around some of the issues around barriers, but I very much believe that the current format that we have 
right now tonight is definitely a barrier for people when they see that we're, we sit for eight hours, sometimes to, to midnight. Definitely would put off a lot of young people that I know. Um, but I'm happy to take that proposal now, and I haven't really had anyone speak against it. I've had people with concerns, but most people are in favour of giving it a try. So um, without anyone coming in to say otherwise, I'm going to suggest that is passed. Okay, thank you. Um, so moving on, no, sorry, back to Councillor Harkin, um, 158. Thank you, Mayor. Yeah, and I just wanted to um, uh, draw everybody's attention to the publication of the Welfare Mitigations Review. And if uh, councillors and aldermen haven't read it, I would encourage people to go and do that. Um, and I, I, I want to commend everybody that was involved in uh, putting it together. It's taken quite a while. And I think that the many of the recommendations that are included in that will go a long way to try and address addressing uh, poverty across our communities and addressing child poverty in particular. Um, and uh, uh, some of the key recommendations are address uh, dealing, getting rid of the two child limit, which I, which people will know uh, burdens a lot of families uh, and puts a lot of children into poverty um, and should never have been introduced here. Uh, it proposes higher winter fuel payments, which we can all agree people desperately need right now. Um, it also proposes uh, recognition payments for cares. And as we know, we wouldn't have a national health service uh, if, if it wasn't for um, the uh, selfless work of a lot of carers, carers across our society, but they need to be um, properly recognized for that. So what I want to propose is that, uh, well, first of all, uh, the, the, the recommendations cannot be implemented without a functioning government. So this is one more argument for the DUP to end its selfless, selfish and reckless boycott. Um, and to help, uh, if we want to see these mitigations and reduce, that means uh, the executive has to be able to function, and it means that they have to be able to come up with a budget. So, you know, I, I, we again implore the DUP to end its um, end its uh, uh, boycott um, and to get on with uh, actually doing something about poverty across our society. And these mitigations point in the direction of doing that. So what I want to propose is that we hold a special council meeting on the welfare mitigations review uh, and invite in the, the department, uh, the, D the DFC, and also uh, relevant organizations to, to the creation of the document um, as well. And I'll just put that in the chat room there. Okay, have you a seconder? Happy to second. Okay, um, Councillor Neil. Um, Councillor Farrell on the proposal. Yeah, uh, thanks, Mayor, uh, and thanks, Councillor Harkin, for the proposal. Happy to support uh, on behalf of the SDLP. We had a wide ranging uh, discussion about poverty at, at the Governance and Strategic Planning Committee, and there were a suite of actions uh, about removing the the two child cap about suspending benefit recovery for six months you know there's a lot of things that need to be done and you know the consensus across the committee was that none of this can happen uh because we don't have an executive in place and i've had a brief look at the proposals um that les allenby headed up and you know there's some really good stuff there that would help uh the, the lowest earners in society, the society that would help uh, people on benefits, that would help carers. Um, but it's going to cost four hundred and twenty million pound over the next three years. Um, we don't have that budget. You know, we, it's going to need executive approval. Um, so happy to support you know, the special meeting. But as Councillor Harkin has said, and as everybody has, has said at the Governance Committee, we can make all these proposals. We can say to Stormont departments that this is what needs to happen. But what really needs to happen is the DUP need to get back to work because nothing is going to change unless we have a government. And I don't know what the outcome of you know, today's discussions are going to be. I don't know if the Secretary of State is going to call an election, but the election isn't going to change one thing. 
if the DUP maintain their boycott, if the DUP believe that the protocol is more important than the cost of living crisis than the crisis in the health service, nothing is going to change. And that's it's absolutely shameful. But happy to support the proposal, happy to engage with uh, you, the authors of the Welfare Mitigations Review. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Farrell. Alderman Devaney. Thank you, Mayor, for allowing me in. And as far as the, the proposal is concerned, um, we have no problem uh, in supporting it. But, uh, you know, uh, as I listen to calls from Sinn Féin, the SDLP uh, uh, and Alliance and others um, to get back to work in Stormont, um, look, uh, I will reiterate again, the DEP stood on a mandate and we got that mandate for what we are. But uh, what I never hear from SDLP or Alliance or others is about how Sinn Féin refused to sit at Westminster. Never hear that, you know, uh, and they dictate to us then that we should be sitting uh, in Stormont. And, you know, I think they need to review themselves and have a look at some of the, their own parties within republicanism, you know, dictating to the DUP to get back. And I think it's very, very clear where the DUP stance is, you know, remove the protocol and we will be back. Uh, in the assembly, and I think our party leader has reiterated that time and time again. But once again, Sinn Fein refused to sit at Westminster. Don't hear anybody calling um, for them to take their seats to Westminster. And I, I think uh, the, the previous speaker is right. We can, can call um, for all we want uh, uh, as a council here um, for money X for X Y and Z. The money has to come from Westminster at the end of the day. So I would call on Sinn Fein to take their seats. Uh, at Westminster and take these arguments to Westminster for more money for the whole of Northern Ireland and especially for our council here and our council area. Thanks, Mayor. Councillor Jackson. Mayor, um, we're happy to support the proposal that's in front of us, um, but we've we hold out little hope that um, that a special meeting of this council is going to change anything. Um, the, the the report highlights the measures that the DUP are preventing um, the the executive are, are preventing the support that, that could be available to people, and that that's that that's a matter for the DUP. Um, but in, in terms of our role as a council, they highlight. The, the measures that could be put in place. Um, if a special meeting allows us to reinforce that, then absolutely. Um, in relation to the comments from, from Alderman Devaney, I think anybody that's that's paying any sort of attention at all um, will see the chaos um, and the circus that Westminster is, is, is and um, it certainly doesn't have the interests of the people of this city and district at heart. And anybody who currently takes seats in Westminster um, should certainly be reviewing that position because um, there it, it's not bearing any fruit um, for 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 the people of the city and district and the people of Ireland in general. So um, there's something have a clear vision in terms of the direction of travel we see our society going in, and it's certainly not um, towards Westminster. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Jackson. And without anyone else in the chat box um, and nobody actually speaking against the proposal, I'm going to assume that the proposal has the support of the, the meeting. So thank you for that. Um, no further items for matters arising from Governance Committee. So moving on to the monthly planning committee held on the 5th of October. Okay, Could I get a... John. John, thank you. Um, Seconder? I've seconded it. Thank you, Alderman Breslin. Um, any matters arising from planning? Nope. Okay, uh, monthly business and culture held on Tuesday, the 11th of October. A proposer and seconder, please. No proposed, Alderman Devaney. Thank you. And a seconder? Seconded, Shauna. Thank you, um, Councillor Cusack. And matters arising, um, Derek first. Uh, thank you, Mayor. 
Uh, item 158 is with regard to car parking in Newton Stewart. Well, it's not, a, uh, my point is not specific to Newton Stewart, but at the end of that particular item on page 141, uh, I had queried about the issue of local traders and other interested stakeholders uh, being kept up to date. Uh, I'm given to understand that traders and the local surgery, those uh, in the vicinity of the Albert Street car park in Castle Derg, uh, have been visited by a uh, representative of council with regard to proposals. Uh, it's just a question to, to officers as to when will initial proposals for the upgrading of the car parking facility, the main car park in Castle Derg at Albert Street, when will they be available for consideration by local councillors? Thank you, Mayor. Um, just going to bring in Stephen if he is there. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Um, currently, those uh, works are out to tender. So once the tender uh, uh, responses are back and we've awarded the contract, then we'll be able to update members as to the the dates and so on from there. Uh, Thank you, State. Mayor, uh, just a quick query. Uh, is it possible to see what has actually gone out to town? Um, yes, I mean, there's no, there's no problem. We can furnish that to members. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Thank you Stephen. Um, Councillor Farrell, a matter of accuracy, sorry. Right. Thanks, Mayor. Sorry to be a pedant, but BC160, uh, access and inclusion, I, I was referred to in the minutes as Alderman Farrell. Um, I've been called um, many things in my time, but but never an alderman. So if that could be corrected, please. congratulations. <laughs> I could say something else, but I'll just say it's noted. Moving on, no further items on that. So the monthly environment and regeneration committee and um, proposer and seconder, please. No proposer, Thank you. Seconder. I'll second, Mayor. Thank you, Councillor McGinley. And any matters arising from E and R. Nope. Okay. Uh, yeah, sorry, sorry, Mara. I didn't get a chance to put it into the chat box. E R two two three. Okay, go ahead. But I, I see. I see. Um, I see as well. well. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead, um, Derek. Go ahead. Uh, thanks very much. Uh, request for installation of bilingual signage. Uh, members will know that I, I have quite often asked for costings on signs and number of signs erected. I, I note that a neighbouring council from Anoma has been able to provide that information to members. Uh, I've asked for some time for this information. When will it be available to us? Chair, perhaps I can come in on that, members. You will be aware that we do have a members workshop on bilingual signage. Um, I think it's next week or possibly the week after. Um, I'm sure members will be able to discuss that um, at the meeting and we can also then bring a report and the members in relation to that. Thank you very much, Chair. Uh, for clarification, where then uh, those costings will be available for that for that group? I will ask the office officers um, who are um, taking the meeting to ensure that they are as best we possibly can. Thank you. Appreciate Chair. that. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Thank you, Karen. Um, Councillor O'Neill. Thanks, Mayor. And it's just in relation to the carbon offset fund, and um, you know there was welcome news there um, with Sunak coming. Uh, something rare. Uh, welcome with him tonight. Uh, that the moratorium on fracking um has been reinstated. Uh, with us coming to Prime Minister, um, and you know this isn't because he's good on climate. It's actually uh, come from years of campaigning from anti-fracking activists. Um, you know his bed is still very his government sorry is still very much in bed with fast the fossil fuel industry and with up to a hundred new North Sea oil and gas licenses on the table, and there just in the last few weeks as well there was a bonfire of the laws that protect um nature and, and people's health. And I suppose it's just a highlight that in the north we're particularly vulnerable to uh, the deregulation um, of environmental laws, given that we don't have an independent environmental watchdog. Um, just something that that is coming up in relation to that is COP twenty seven. You know, next next month in Egypt, um, and it it just it it looks to be that it's going to be another expensive greenwashing affair. 
um, you know, Egypt's human rights record is uh is not good with uh about sixty thousand political prisoners there who have been outspoken against the their regime. Um, and just to highlight that you know there is a global day of action happening across the world on the twelfth with regards to the climate crisis and on Derry the gather and are holding an action. So just to let members know and encourage uh, support for this. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Neil, and Councillor Neil, back to yourself on two, three, one. Yeah, just very briefly um, around the um, the um, Fergie uh, pedestrian um, consultation. It was just uh, as well as um, council uh, proactively uh, consulting with local residents in the area as proposed during the meeting. Uh, to also engage with RNIB. Um, I know that there was many councillors here present. RNIB did a training day um, for uh, for councillors and elected reps um, around uh, visual impairment and, and, and point planning. And I think like any changes like this in our pedestrian walkways, I think we need to proactively engage with um, our visually impaired uh, members of the community. Uh, so it's just uh, the consultation is ongoing at the moment, but if council could proactively uh, engage with the RNAB on on that layout. I think that will be very very good. Cheers. Thank you, Councillor Neil. Um, Councillor McGinley on two three one as well. Sure, I get Mayor. Um, I was actually coming on just on the part of that um minute in relation to Bishop Street and the parking um and the congestion of the parking. Um, since that meeting, uh, I've noticed uh, that the police have put down homes to stop the parking adjacent to the parklets. And whilst it's welcome, it's not technically actually legal um, in terms of the rules of the road. Um, it doesn't actually stop parking. People are doing it, but um, it, it, you wouldn't be able to give a parking ticket if somebody parked there. Um, but the residents that had raised that issue with me were grateful um, that action has been taken on it to stop parking. So there's not the congestion at the minute. Um, so I just wanted to um, de raise that and note that that has happened. Um, and hopefully when the consultation opens, as Maeve has referenced there, um, and I had raised in the committee that those residents are included in the consultation because I think it's it's they, they're being impacted um, the most by, by the one-way system. Thanks. Thank you, um, Emma. And Councillor Ferguson on the same issue. Thank you, Mayor. And, and um, as again around the, the pedestrianisation of um, Bishop Street, and I know Councillor McKinney has raised it a few times um, how that it does force traffic into the fountain. And the, the, there's further than junctions further on down the fountain, which has become road safety issues. So it's just kind of to feed that back. But Mayor, it was predominantly around an article had been put out by the BBC to state that councillors had voted on this and made the decision. And I just wanted officers to clarify that this was a, um, a paper to note. And to comment back on the consultation and that council actually has no deciding decision over this pedestrianisation of Bishop Street because there was a big outrage that we as councillors have made this decision without consulting with members or with residents. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Ferguson. I'll bring in Alderman Devaney and then I'll bring in Kiarn. Thank you, Mayor, for allowing me in. I, and I agree with, with all the issues that have been raised down by previous speakers and around the, 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 the issues about the pedestrian zone and around Bishop Street and Fergie Street and the issue and around um, vehicular access up and down. And I do agree. Um, I see, do see police cones there now on um, Bishop Street. Um, look, I, I, I thought it was legal, but uh, I'm told they not. But I, I do agree with Councillor Ferguson. There was a, a, a write-up in one of the papers that council, councillors agreed to this uh, on a special council meeting. So, uh, you know, uh, at the end of the day, I don't think it was a special council meeting and around it. I do take on board um, um, uh, the the issue and around the RNIB. But I do think, Mayor, um, there should be discussions, you know, a wider discussion and around the businesses and the people in there and all people with uh, um, the, the disability action groups uh, and around the discussion to make life easier for them um, and around that area. You know, when, when we're trying to make it a more welcoming area, um, we need to make those people um, with disabilities very welcome as well. So maybe it could broaden out to you know, I would advise when the consultation was out that those are that uh, not only their NIB, but the broader hub of those um, um, disability groups out there. Thanks, Mayor. 
Thank you, um, Alderman Devaney and Karen. Just if you wish to respond. Yeah, Chair, just to uh, confirm uh, members' views in terms of uh, the the report was brought to members for information in relation to a public consultation event on the COVID recovery scheme, which was um, put into place. Um, it's currently active um, in terms of consultation, and we um, are also um, going to advertise that in local papers um, next week as well. So we welcome, um, and I'm sure members will welcome the views of as many people as possible, and we certainly will um, engage with all um, relevant stakeholder groups, um, the, the, the groups uh, relating to um, disability action, et cetera, were consulted originally, um, and we um, will uh, continue that during this consultation as well. Um, and certainly members, uh, we will bring a report to you for consideration once we have the results of the, the consultation and members can decide the way forward at that stage. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Karen and Alderman Guy on your separate issue. Uh, thank you, Mayor. I, I would just like to add to that that, that um, if the main businesses and the Cali Road hairdressers and so on could definitely be included in that survey because I think it's important we find out have they lost any business to the fact that there is no longer um, the bus route goes that direction through uh, whilst heading towards the waterside. Um, and I know a lot of elderly people who would have used that to get off get their hair done on a Friday afternoon and then jumped back on the bus uh, and they, they no longer can do that. But uh, just to bring up on ER228, uh, 22 units, the Bonds Hull, um, the no waiting restrictions, uh, I can understand why DFI are going to remove um, the lines in three separate areas because obviously there's an issue there with traffic when when People are trying to pull out of the likes of York Street and so on, and I understand that. But if, if we could write to DFI and just ask them, could they confer with um, the owners of Brown's Restaurant who are losing uh, daytime business due to the fact that uh, no waiting restrictions, double yellow lines were placed uh, outside their business, um, and they feel that it has affected the business. Uh, so if they could maybe be included in that, their um, response to the DFI. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Gay. Um, no further speakers in relation to matters arising for ENR. So moving on to Health and Communities Committee held on the 13th of October. If I could get a proposer and seconder for that. Proposed, Mayor. I'll say thank you. Thank Second you. Um, um, I had Councillor Boyle and Councillor McGinley there. Thank you anyway. Um, so, any matters arising from the minutes apart from the William Street Baths? No other matters arising. Um, folks, it is six o'clock, and I have a feeling ma the William Street Baths might go on. So, I'm going to take a 10 minute comfort break for people, and we will return then um, and bring the William Street Baths issue out of confidential. So, thank you.
Mary, we can't hear you. Just realized that, and I, 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 I was really profound there. You missed it. Uh, <laughs> um, just to let you know, we're now going to take the item of the William Street Baths, which was in confidential, out um, for open discussion. I just want to remind people um, to stay away from the finances around it. Um, if we could not mention the name of any contractor um, and stay away from the tender and any pricing around that. Um, and we're, we're happy to take the debate. I will say in terms of expediency around the debate, I know that um, there's people here with very strong feelings around it. So I'm going to allocate speakers two minutes each. Um, I think that that is the, the fairest way to proceed with the debate. Um, so to begin with, I'm going to bring in um, Councillor Emma McGinley, who well, was the councillor that asked it to come out of confidential. So over to yourself, Emma. Good good Chair, and, and I will be brief because earlier I had sort of outlined the reason for why I wanted this to be brought out of confidential. There's massive public interest in what's happening with city baths. The people who use city baths are asking, when's it going to be reopened? What's going on? When are we going to find out? The, there hasn't been information in relation to it. And I understand the confidential elements of the report and obviously won't um, refer to them. Not only is it service users, as I'd referred to earlier, you've got the City of Derry Swimming Club where they would use city baths as their, um, their training pool. Um, it was a full length pool. Um, at the minute, they're operating out of Ford Arena and Templemore Sports Complex. They're trying their best. Um, they're not meeting their full capacity in terms of their training program. Our own council's learning to swim programs um, are well over capacity. Um, there's waiting lists where if the city baths was reopened, we would be able to take those on and there would be revenue coming into council from that. Um, alongside that, um, you know, as I say, there's people there. Um, there's residents that have been contacting us all as members um, they, they find out what's going on, who use the pool, not just for their physical health, but for their mental health as well. And I think it's really, really important that we're doing all we can to move this forward. The people in this community have waited too long. Um, it has been delayed far too many times um, and pushed and kicked the can down the road. And it only becomes more expensive the further down the road it's kicked, um, given the inflation and everything else that comes with that. Um, so if a proposal is needed um, coming out of that report is that we remove the deferral and go with the original recommendations on the report. Gourmet, Mayor. Thank you, Councillor McGinley. And I see Councillor Doyle has been quick off the mark in the chat box and seconded. Um, Councillor Harkin. Thank you, Mayor. Yeah, look, thank you again to uh, Councillor McGinley for, for bringing this up. And we think that we need to move forward immediately with the uh, essential works at City Baths. It's been delayed for far too long, and people are very, very frustrated across uh, across the district who use the uh, facility. Um, it is a massive loss to uh, the the local area, and there is a lot of frustration. Look, I've been talking to people today who are planning protests, um, who who don't believe what we are telling them now. Who think that there's a plan to shut this down, and that there's been a plan for years. Um, and can't understand why it's taken the council so long to uh, move forward by opening up the city baths. I think the, the attempt to delay this and frustrate this was disgraceful. Uh, and those that did it uh, tried to bring back out arguments that were made uh, over a year ago, if not longer, about um, uh, what the cost of the essential works and why it wouldn't be worth it. So hopefully they will change their minds now. Uh, and get back on board with getting the city baths open as soon as possible. Uh, we've demonstrated that there, th this is a core council responsibility. Leisure is core council responsibility. Um, and by delaying this, we have now created a situation where it will cost more. If we delay it further, uh, it will cost even more because you can guarantee by December, contractors will come to us and say it's not enough anymore and we need to add more hundreds of thousands to the bill. So I think we need to get on with it now um, and pass this. Uh, uh, we, we, we know that there's not enough capacity in what we have right now. We have City of Derry frustrated. We have uh, 400 children on a waiting list. Um, and again, this is not a council add-on. This is a key service that the council provides. Uh, and I think that it's been delayed too long. And I think we need to move on it. So we're going to su we're supporting as people before profit 
uh, the, the original recommendation to get on with the job of getting the city bus fixed and opened as soon as possible. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Harkin and Councillor Ferguson. Thank you, Mayor, and thank you to Councillor McGinley for bringing this forward. Um, I spoke uh, on this item and the fact that this is a highly deprived area. This is somewhere that City Bass is much loved within the city and district, and many of us have actually learned to swim and have memories of swimming within City Bass. We had a, a similar paper where it was showed the provision and Councillor Harkin has touched on it, how every time that we have a block booking of swimming lessons, we have a waiting list of 400 children waiting to get on that list. And that is a revenue making uh, stream that we have within Council and that's something that we need to expand on. And we can't expand on that unless we have City Bass back up and, and running. Mayor, when this was suggested back in 2020, I think, we all thought it was going to be up and running by now. And we have seen the 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 procurement price go up because of delays because of um because of material costs and we've seen um other councillors talk about it how that you can't guarantee a price today and the same price tomorrow so mayor we're fully supportive of this i think the the city bass we have identified the majority of the money and i think that it's something that needs to be reopened we haven't invested in this uh, swimming in this leisure centre in so many years and to let it to defer it for a few months will mean that it'll become so um, expensive that we would have to put on the capitalist uh, uh, projects and I think Mayor that that would then be the the end of City Bass because at this moment in time we, we are struggling to even try and see Templemore be redone so Mayor we're more than happy to support the original recommendation to go ahead with the the um, repairs within City Bass and fully support it. Thank you. Thank you Councillor Ferguson. Um, Councillor Donnelly. Uh, but Chair, Chair uh, was Councillor Doyle on before me or am I seeing things? He seconded the proposal, oh. but didn't indicate to speak. Okay, the brown arm. Thank you, Chair. Uh, look, I, I, I spoke on this in, in committee, uh, and, and basically all, all I can say is what, what you know, repeat what I've said at this meeting. Uh, I've had uh, I've spoke to people in, in, in the community who are who have heard uh, what had happened here, what the SDLP had done, and they're absolutely aghast. Didn't go into great details with them. But Chair, what I would like to say is that, you know, and, and, and the question that people are asking here is why? And it's a question that I can't answer. Even if I was permitted the answer because of confidentiality, it's a question that I can't. I know uh, Councillor Tierney at the time said about it's only two months, it's only two months. I supported that, you know, and, and I think it might have been a colleague of yours pointed out, but the two months could take out the summer could wipe out that summer. I'm not going to regurgitate all the arguments here because they've been made eloquently by by all our representatives uh, about the waiting lists and that and about about how much needed and vital, you know, and key and vital services as in the Murr Ward. But look, I, I, I just again want to remind uh, uh you know what what the SDLP in the past have done regarding the airport, millions of pounds in my opinion put in the vanity. Uh, project of this of this airport was a relationship or a business that will be dissolved. We've been Millennium Forum handed, I think it's almost eight thousand uh, pound a week, and there's virtually no benefit for working class people in the Murr Ward. The representatives come on, and when they're questioned about it, they talk airy fairy language about having a great relationship with some community groups, but the reality is there's no benefit. Uh, the PCSP again, hundreds of thousands for they promote something that that in my view is rotten and corrupt and can't be uh, fixed. And we also have the issue of a former CEO who many, many people in this community and, and throughout the city district believe that walked away with. Uh, oh, sir, John Lee, just to say you're over your two minute limit, could you bring your remarks to a close? Yeah, Chair, look, I, what, I, what I would ask if, if Karen McFarlane could, could, could uh, uh, meant to do is to start, what, what was the amount of savings that the, the council has made during the, the, the time that, that this uh, facility was, was closed? Because, you know, I, I know we can't go into figures not, but that could be factored in into what is being asked here. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Donnelly. Um, Alderman Kerrigan. Thank you very much, Mayor, for allowing me in. Um, and Mayor, we do have issues in regards to the city bath. We've had issues from the very start. Uh, we we uh, are curtailed on what we can say because we're still an open business. And, and again, the majority of the arguments were are financial, 
nightmare. And that's that's the situation. And again, from my understanding from when it was raised at committee level, it was to be held back while we are ongoing with a, a very detailed process in regards to our uh, rich process and in regards to looking at everything. Everything has to be looked at here at this stage. And so, Mayor, without going into detail, as I say, we're curtailed very much in what we can say, but it's just, you're, you know, we've got to put this on hold. The, 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 the costs have changed dramatically uh, since it was initially raised, and I don't think I'm saying too much there, but dramatically. Uh, and we would have concern for the ratepayers. And again, City Bass, like the airport, is a very, very difficult one to sell to anyone within the Derg D. Uh, you, you know, it has been raised there. But, Mayor, um, it's, it's just one, as I say, as far as I was concerned, it was being delayed slightly till it would be looked at, along with every other service which the council provides. So, Mayor, as I say, we're just uh, content to just let it sit. And, and it shouldn't be a pet project for individuals pushed forward ahead of others. Mayor, everything has to be looked at. And I just feel that we just have to give it a bit more time and deal with it then in due course. And yes, maybe it is something that the Council have been lacking in communicating to people what's happening. But uh, we'll leave it at that at the minute, Mayor. Thank you very much. Thank you, Alderman Kerrigan. Alderman Hussey. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, I heard... Um, Councillor Harkin referring to people across the district. Uh, I didn't see him knocking any doors out in our area, uh, in Straban, in the Spurn ward, uh, checking as to their frustration with regard to city baths. We've already had one councillor who reported in uh, for duty at four o'clock and left in protest at the way uh, funds are being spent in the city and beyond the city boundaries is being ignored. Uh, and I, I, I've spoken to that councillor during the break, and you know I have to empathise very much with what he said. From the beginning, members will know that I expressed my concerns about this particular project. If we were talking about investing and uh, having a secure uh, leisure facility for the next 20, 25 years, great, we're not. We're talking about investing, and this is before the, the cost went up, investing to give it a couple of years life. And that's it. it at some stage, it's going to have to go on the capitalist, and it should be there now. Uh, that's where it should be. So, excuse me. Uh, sorry, Amir. Uh, with regard to the project, uh, I, I'm just totally against it because I think on the good uh, that that funding that, that would be going towards that project would do on the wider district area. Um, you know, it, it, the amount of money spread across our district could have so much benefit to so many people rather than what I do regard uh, as what has now become a vanity project for some people. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Alderman Hussey. Um, Councillor Doyle. Thanks, Mayor, and you know, credit to, uh, to Emma for bringing this out of confidential. Uh, I've spoken to the Sinn Féin group leader recently about this, and you know, I think a number of us were aghast at what came out of committee. Um, and I have no doubt that um, if that committee had been in public business, uh, people would have thought secondly about their uh, motives and direction. Um, I have to say, um, you know, look, Derek and Keith have been consistent throughout all of the discussions that they, uh, you know, uh, held their positions. But for others, um, who I won't mention, for them to do a U-turn um, behind closed doors on a project that they were publicly telling people they were in favour of, um, I thought to be in very bad taste um, and very disingenuous. Um, and... That's all I'd say about it. But I would, Mayor, think um, that uh, I would like uh, there to be a recorded vote for uh, the proposal that I've seconded. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Doyle. And um, Councillor Donnelly, I'll come back to, to that question that you posed for um, Kerr McFarland. Um, Councillor Tierney. Thank you, Mayor. Um, and like I said at the beginning of the meeting, um, I uh, support and thank uh, Councillor McGinley for bringing um, or for proposing to bring this paper out of confidential business because it gives us uh, within the SDLP an opportunity 
to clarify the mistruths that people have been posting on social media and telling people by every other form of communication since this committee took place. Um, I am more than happy, once again, to reiterate my full support and the SDLP's full support for the refurbishment and the reopening of city baths. And I would go further to suggest that I look forward to having a conversation in the future about the redevelopment of city baths at its location in William Street. I also uh, would point out, Mayor, that the issues with city baths date back as far as 2008, if not further, when at that stage, several structural problems were being blamed for the issues at city baths. It wasn't me or the SDLP that were using those words at that time. It was a former Sinn Féin councillor for the city side ward. So I welcome today the fact that Sinn Féin are now pro pro providing their support for uh, the, re the, the, the refurbishment of city baths at its current site in William Street. I also would point out that I don't need to take a history lesson from anyone on this council about the importance of that facility to the people of that community as someone who grew up in the shadows of city baths and my parents still live there. I do want to rebuttal a couple of the things that other members have said throughout this debate because they clearly, clearly weren't listening to this paper or other papers that were presented at the Health and Communities Committee. Several members have spoken about the Learn to Swim program. There is a council policy that the Learn to Swim program is run at tier one leisure facilities. For anyone's information, City Baths on William Street is a tier two facility. So if, tier, if City Baths was open tonight, those people would still be on the waiting list because there's no space in our tier one sites and we would need a policy change within council to do that. So using that argument is null and void in my opinion. Councillor Donnelly says that he can't answer people when they ask him why the SDLP made the decision we made at the at the committee. I'll tell him why he can't answer them. He can't answer them because he hasn't attended any of the meetings of the financial working group where I have very clearly outlined our position. Mayor, as you and other councillors are well aware, we are staring down the barrel of a very, very massive uh, rich implication coming uh, ahead of us um, in, in February of this year. The SDLP- Mr. Tierney, you're over the two minute mark. Mayor, I'm coming there close. The SDLP are extremely worried about lumping a massive bill on the people who are already struggling uh, to fit that. And we are not suggesting for one minute that we do not carry out the works at City Baths. We are suggesting that we defer them until we have a clearer understanding of council finances in two months' time. That's what we're asking people to do. We are not suggesting not to do it. We fully support doing it. But we also support not raising the rates of people across this district and i think that people need to take that into consideration when they're uh voting here tonight Councillor thank tierney thank, thank you. you thank you um country gallagher thank you mayor i'm just astounded by Councillor tierney's uh remarks because I, I am on the financial group and at the beginning of this meeting uh under Chair's business, and uh, I was keeping me powder dry, Mayor, but I, uh, the SDLP was bringing a motion uh, around lumping this council into a big black hole of finances and uh, what they were calling some sort of a park, I imagine, or open park in, in Straban. And that party was well aware of the finances and the big black hole and the potential for rises in this council, uh, the rate pairs, somewhere between 12 and 18%. Big black holes. We are currently looking and facing three, four million because of heat, light, fuel. Before we start, millions around staff before we start and wage rises. Before we start, we might need 12 million quid. And they were prepared at the start of this meeting to introduce new finances without any consideration of other strategic plans that this council has. But they were quite willing to go with. And he's sitting in the finance committee. Now, this current proposal is a current service that this council provides. That's what it is. It's not a new one. It's been going for many, many years. And maybe if we, we found out what the savings were 
uh, we, we might be able to be in a better, better position to uh, make decisions. However, Councillor uh, Kerrigan, very selective. If he's talking about a moratorium, let's talk about a moratorium on the airport. Let's talk about a moratorium on the PCSP. On Councillor Gallagher, Councillor Gallagher, you're over two millions and millions well. of pounds. Please bring your remarks to a close. So it's very selective of what people want to do and what they don't want to do. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Gallagher and um, Alderman McCready. Thanks, Mayor. Uh, difficult item. Uh, seems very um, emotive. Clearly, there's there's geography which um, enables different positions. Uh, the financial one and the main one, and you know the fact that it is an open business. You, we need to be clear with people that um, things have changed, you know, whether it's inflation, cost of living, energy, and, and all of the above. So to even stand still as a council, we'll, have, we'll see an increase in rates. You, you cannot dispute that. And I suppose the point in here is making decisions and difficult decisions in this case will affect councils very differently depending on where they get, get their vote from. And that will have an influence uh, on how they'll move on this. But it's short-term thinking. It's short-term thinking when you look back at the difficult decisions that had to be made previously in this council. You know, I, I think my colleague mentioned it within this committee about Lisna Galvin uh, swimming pool. Um, there, there's Templemore sports complex uh, still on, uh, which is not, you know, which is not there yet. So there's so many things, and yes, it has good hype, and there's many people which are passionate about these things. But as a council, we have a fiduciary duty to our ratepayers to be straight and honest with them and affordability. Right now. In this place and time, with the astronomical increases for, for this council, anyone to, to try and push something through to be to be popular and to try and make the media and appease people isn't being straight with the mayor. And we can and we know that. And we will hurt this council in the long term. We will hurt other projects, we'll hurt even uh, this project itself, whether it's a short term five year commitment to keep the baths open. You need to look strategically long term for the next generations coming through of what is affordable, what are sustainable leisure facilities, you know, specifically, you know, what the root, we, we understand the root causes of the de delay, the financial implications on the current budget right now, but also the implications of next year. We need to set those rates and to be clear with people and especially people at home. Alderman McCready, could you bring your remarks to a close? Uh, the closing remark, Mayor, is when we make a decision, we have to either cut something or charge for it. And there is balance in the books. There is no other way around this. Thanks, Mayor. Thank you, Alderman McCready. Um, Councillor Logue. Thank you, Mayor. I wasn't coming in to speak to this because I know my party colleague, uh, M. McGinley, ha has outlined our case that we support and always have supported uh, the refurbishment of the city bus. However, I just want to point out uh, something that uh, Councillor Tierney uh, mentioned in regards to uh, the opening of city bus will not have an impact on the, the waiting list, which require tier one uh, provision. This will, this opening of city bus will have an impact because all the other user groups who are currently using the other council facilities for swimming, it has to be divided up at the moment. And even though city baths mightn't be able to be used for uh, one uh, special um, session, it will leave it open for others to use. So therefore, opening the city baths will have a direct impact on the waiting list. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, um, Councillor Logue, and I have oh, just one further, um, Councillor Farrell. And if it's on that question, Councillor Farrell, just for clarity, I was told as long as we stay away from the tender itself um, and the contractor and any specific figures around that, um, the debate was fine. But go ahead. Well, that's not what I was going to ask, Mayor, but here, thanks for letting me on. So it's a procedural question. So. There is a recommendation in the confidential paper that says the recommendation is deferred until the second round of discussions of the financial working group has taken place. So we need clarity on what is this vote on? Is it they reject that recommendation or is it they reject that recommendation and 
accept the recommendation that was on the pack. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Farrell. Um, while they get clarification on that, I'm going to bring in um, Claire McFarland on the question that was posed by Councillor Donnelly. Um, Mayor, just I, I'm conscious um, of the previous discussion around finances, um, but as a matter um, of public record, the 21-22 um, outturn report of council um, did indicate that a save, an additional sum of £250,000 had been allocated um, towards the um, le leisure reserve, uh, mainly coming from savings as a result of the uh, closure of city baths. Thank you, um, Karen. Could um, Morris Devaney? Morris, have you spoke already? No, no, no. Go ahead. Go ahead. Then. <laughs> no, thank you, Mayor, for uh, allowing me in. Uh, and I've listened to the debate quite contently here. Uh, and look, I, I do uh, agree with Alderman Hussey. Do you see if this was a project that we were spending um, the amount of money that has been discussed or uh, 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 in confidential? If that was a project that someone was telling me that this could last for you know, 15, 20 years. Um, look, that's what we would be asking. Because if we were delivering a project, should it be a play park, we would be asking how long this would last. And I, I'm well sure we'd be asked the question if it would last longer than five years. But anyway, and around, um, some people have asked about savings, Mayor. And I have asked the question previously uh, at a meeting and around the maintenance of city baths since it closed and how much that has cost us alone for the maintenance because what I was told was the maintenance had to be carried out on it as if the facility was fully open. Now that costing was to come forward. I don't know, maybe I missed it in a report, but um, I have no update or, or know how much that cost at the minute. But you know, we talk about savings. There was still maintenance going on there as if the baths were uh, in full operation. But that's my concern and our party's concern, Mayor. Look, if we were looking at spending the, the, the X amount of pounds on a project that is going to last 15, 20 years, but we're not here at best five. Thanks, Mayor. Thank you, Alderman Devaney. OK, I have no further speakers and I have clarification from the original proposer of what is being proposed. So the proposal is the council rejects the deferral and accepts the original recommendation of officers to appoint a contractor. So if we are content, I am going to ask the Chief Executive to take us through a recorded vote. To, uh, sorry, Mayor, the, the recommendation actually included in the pack at h and and confidential was, was twofold. So just on a point of clarity, Councillor McGinley her uh, proposal is we reject the deferral, which I understand, and accepts the original recommendations of offers to appoint a contractor. But there's a further recommendation about the additional budget. So is it, can we have clarity in that? Is that it just appoint I, a contractor? Ju ju just a second, I'm going to bring in the city solicitor because I don't have the original pack. So I'm going to bring in the city solicitor. Mayor, if the city solicitor starts to speak, we don't hear him. We're, we're just having a wee discussion here. So, Councillor McGinley, I'm going to have to ask because none of us here have the original paper. Um, have you 
got a copy of it. Um, we just need clarity. Is it the totality of the original proposal that you are changing? Or are you keeping the second bit? Do you have the paper? I, I do. Um, I, I have the papers here. It's it's basically the recommendations that council officers have put forward on that paper, that we keep those and remove the deferral so that we can move ahead. Okay, no, that, that that's clear. Thank you. Um, Alderman McCready, I'm not going to allow the question because I have no, I have called um, a vote, so I'm going to move towards that vote. The debate has finished; it was just clarity, so I'm going to move to the vote. So I'm going to pass to the chief executive. Mayor, the, the, this pertains to the vote. It's not a contribution, but a point, of, a question on clarification. So I apologise for for disruption, it, but I think it's important. I think okay, it's important. Go ahead. So go ahead, because I see the councillor Tierney as well has Thanks. a point of order. Uh, so go. Uh, uh, my, my concern is not about what's been put forward. I think our procedures here is uh, uh, um, there's lots of ambiguity. I think we're going to rush into something which has huge ramifications on, on finances. So can we take a moment? Can we have a recess? Can we put all the information up on the screen so we can see exactly uh, what is going forward? Because I don't want this to be something we look back on in a month's time with um, with ramifications, I wish I had have did this. So for good governance and fiduciary responsibility, I think we should take some time and put things so we can all see and read, not just what one, one member is saying to us over the uh, the kind of airwave. So can we just take that condor moment, please, so we can clarify before we vote? I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, Alderman McCready, we took a vote at the start that we were going to bring this into um, open business. As a result of it being an open business, we can't put that information on the screen because that information will be confidential. Um, so we are in this position now where we have this vote. The vote has been called. Um, so I am going to move towards the vote, um, but I'm going to bring in Councillor Tierney on the point of order. Thank, thank you, Mayor. Um, and it's just around the, the, the process and what we're doing and how, how we're going to move forward. Um, from experience um, and similar instances like this um, of times gone by, should the, should the Council um, the elected body of council not be uh, first of all asked by yourself um, uh, as the, the mayor to reject the recommendation coming out of that committee which is to defer until December and then vote on the process going forward um, because those are those in my mind should be two separate votes and have always been whenever we're changing a decision of a committee at full council have always been two separate votes. I'll seek clarification. Uh, Mayor, thank you. Um, no, this is a recommendation from a committee, um, and because it's a recommendation from a committee, uh, it is open to the council to make an alternative proposal instead um, that doesn't have to reject the recommendation from the committee and the way in which we used to do in the um, in the planning committee with matters this is this is different um, so this is just the it's open to elected members to make a different proposal instead and we simply vote on that proposal thank you for that clarity and Councillor Donnelly I'm sorry I'm not letting you back in with another question I have called the vote and I am moving to the vote so I am now passing to the chief executive thank you can, can we see the motion It's in the chat box. It's not on screen. Councillor McGinley, this is your proposal? Yeah. Yep. And um, could, could could you add the the other bit that we just that you discussed verbally? The well, if you just want to remove to appoint a contractor and accepts the original recommendations of officers, that covers the twofold um, nature. It's just there's there's financial figures within the original proposals in the report, so I don't want to put them on given the the confidential nature of them. Emma, could you just put that in the chat box without the figures then, so we're clear. It's just what's on screen there. The, okay. The original recommendations of the officers. That's Mayor, 
Mayor, just before we take a vote, Mayor, Mayor do you see what Karen says? 2021, 22. No, 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 we're not, we're not having any more discussion. I'm moving towards the vote. It's almost the same. The proposal's on the screen. I have called the vote, so I'm moving towards the vote. So I'm passing now to the Chief Executive. It is on the screen. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, members. Alderman Bresland. Against. Alderman Devaney. Against. Alderman Guy. Against. Alderman Hussey. Against. Alderman Carrigan. Against. Alderman McCready. Against. Um, Alderman Wark. Councillor Jason Barr. Councillor John Boyle. Or. Councillor Michaela Boyle. Or John. Councillor Carr. Or John. Councillor Cusick. Or. Councillor Dobbins. Or John. Councillor Donnelly. Or. Councillor Doyle. Or. Councillor Duffy. Or. Councillor Edwards. Councillor Farrell. Or. Councillor Ferguson. For John. Councillor Fleming. For John. Councillor Gallagher. For. Councillor Harkin. For. Councillor Heaney. Councillor Jackson. For John. Councillor Kelly. For John. Councillor Logue. For. Councillor McGinley. For John. Councillor McHugh. Councillor McKinney. Sorry, John McHugh, for. Thank you. Councillor McKinney. For. Councillor Mooney. For, John. Councillor O'Neill. For. Councillor Riley. For. Councillor Sinoy Barr. For, John. Councillor Tierney. For, as we are not against appointing a contractor. Thank you. Just checking if there are members um, that um, still require a vote. John Pinsler Edwards here for apologies. Thank you. Any other members? Thank you. Mayor, I've recorded 25, 4, and 6 against, so the proposal passes. Thank you, Chief Executive. Um, moving on now, that will take us into confidential for decision. Um, bear with us.